grumpy old man whose show is officially a teenager. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Not to get it on. The church we got to manage to get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. Episode uh, 3250, I Damn. think, is what this one is. 3249. Well, that's how many we've done. No, that, th- that this includes taping, this one. This taping oh. is 3249. Oh, oh, it is. Yeah, this episode. That's right. Sorry. Uh, well, we didn't make it to 3250. Uh, <laughs> good day, Gina Grad. Good day to you. And Bald Brian. I have a little champagne yeah, here. Yeah, a little. Mm-hmm. Clink, clink, everybody. Yeah. Bottoms Cheers. Up. Everyone's health. That's right. Um, yeah, we're having our bar mitzvah. You are today. indeed. We're a man today. Yeah. Our show becomes a man today. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of kind of crazy. It's um, That's a my tough. longest running job as I as I think about it. I mean, I did radio for 10 years and then I did it for three years and maybe 10 years in a few months. And then I went to mornings. You've been a dad for, for a lot of <laughs> Your most years. important job. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Role. Yeah. My most important role right. as a father. <laughs> That's true. Right. Speaking of that, um, the uh, you know I always tell you you can kind of you can kind of tell what people want by what direction things go. Like two by fours used to be two by four, mm-hmm. now they're inch and a half by three and a half mm-hmm. because whoever's making them makes that a little was. more. Plywood used to be three quarters thick, and now it's. 11 sixteenths or 13 sixteenths or some, I want to say 13 is, that's too many. I'm out. That's right. Um, yeah, it's 15, 15 sixteenths or whatever the hell it is. The you point get is. one more per every 10 or whatever well, it they, is. They, they shave it down. Oh. I told you school teachers don't like going to work like anyone doesn't like going to work. Yeah. Because uh, every time I hear this, it always, it always stops me. It's like, Last weekend, President's Day. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, all right, so what? No school on Monday? Yeah, no school Friday and no school Monday. And I'm like, wait a minute. I always felt like long weekends were three-day weekends. They're putting one day in front Uh, of the holiday, and they're putting one day after the holiday. Yep, we experienced that as well. Which just kind of means you don't want to go in. I, I don't blame you, yeah. but let's just call it what it is. You don't yeah. want to go in and you would like to get paid. Are you forklift drivers, roofers, truckers, podcasters, we all share your dream <laughs> of not going in and getting paid, but everyone else has clients and uh-huh. your clients don't want to come in almost as bad as you don't want to come in. It's the agreements. perfect crime. And now it's the perfect crime. Yeah. That's, it's always that's euphemistically referred to or, or listed as a personal development day or, or a teacher in service day. And it's like, just call it what it is. Extra right. Day. And also, bonus day. <laughs> bonus day. We got uh, everyone, you know, the, the other danger of, you know, locking it down for a year and a half or whatever it was is um, kids and teachers kind of get used to whatever, whatever it is. Kids are, I think we all do malleable and adaptable by nature. Yeah. You keep them home for a year and a half and their relationship with truancy becomes very <laughs> different. Sure. Yeah. Very. It's not a year being truant. And not only that, but the parents too. It's like, yeah, my kid goes, yeah, I'm not feeling it today. I'm like, yeah, all right. Well, what difference does it make? You're home for a year and a half. Like yeah. we're all used to this dance. Yeah. Now. There, this tweet went viral a couple of weeks ago. That I forgot to bring it in, but I was thinking about it and it was applauded. It was retweeted. It was, it was congratulated. And it made me think of you because it said like, my kid, we got in the car for school today and my kid said he didn't feel well. I checked. He had no fever, nothing wrong. Wrong with him, so I took him to a movie and we got ice cream. Welcome to your first mental health day, kid. Right, and that was like applauded. Um, also, we have um, a uh, so anyway. Uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, we sold out all the shows over the weekend. Everyone was uh, big fans. They listen. They mm-hmm. come out. They show up with their husbands and their wives and their kids and. Uh, this is something that just it didn't exist when we started. Um, we're way too fast to poo-poo things that don't exist because they don't exist. Right. No one's ever done that before. Anyway, that means someone's going yeah, to do it we first. all sound like our dads talking yeah. about bottled water. You yeah. know, who's going to pay four dollars? What Starbucks? 
Three fifty for a cup of coffee. Make get my own coffee. I get all the warm ups I want down at the diner for fifty cents. You know, we do so. Podcasting was the same thing. Like, what? No, who's gonna? Mm-hmm. Why would anybody? And I was just like, we'll just take the radio model and move it over to the digital world. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, no, that. Why? And I was like, why? Why not? Why not? Seems to pencil out mm-hmm. in my head. So we started and um, started my. Den and uh, and here we are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was uh, God. I don't know how long. Now you got to ask Geo, uh, Chris, how long I lasted in my my den. I know when Andy Dick came mm-hmm. in and ate all my lunch. Yeah, meat. Just, just look at what day that episode was. <laughs> I look. There's no amount of wealth that I can accumulate where a man can come to my home and demolish pre-sliced cheese oh. and pre-cut smoked turkey. Right. Yeah. The, you know, well, I don't know. He ate $9 worth of worth of pre-cut cheese and that way too much yeah. for me. That it's that's stay. it's symbolic. Yeah. There's something there. And then of course the cigar and then the cigar was hidden and then the cigar stunk in the room for the next uh week and Did you feel cuckolded by him coming over and eating your lunch meat and smoking mm-hmm. cigars? I I did a little bit. Yeah. I think I think that's what I experienced although at the time I, I seemed to just focus on the meat and sure. the in the cheese. But uh, then we went from there to, uh, oh yeah, Geo, another thing. Uh, the amount of podcasting we've done on this show, if you just put it all together back to back, like you listen to one show and then you immediately listen to the next show, 230 days of Ooh, listening fuck. and uh, 16 hours. So says Gio, who's doing all the legwork around here. He's Actually, doing 15 it. hours, 59 minutes, 52 seconds. So wow. Right well, there you go, Gio. Wow. All right. So uh, there's that. There's also a, uh article out of the New York Times when uh, I think we were talking in here a week or so ago where I was saying something's up. <laughs> Something, it'll, is it, is it, pertains to covid things will be coming out there'll be there'll be some information some foia request or something they'll get some documents you, and stuff will start because you have been saying that there's a weird pattern that was going on and the pattern that was going i as i as i said it's always patterns 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 so follow the patterns you'll know everything if you follow patterns like i learned uh i was talking to august earlier today because everything to me is just pattern. And he said, um, I said, what are you doing today, Mike? And he said, all the stuff the nanny normally does because the nanny's sick and she's not coming in. And I said, uh, well, you know, your nanny, I mean, she's always getting, she's always got something. And he said, no, no, my nanny's a, she's a Viking. She's tough. If she's got the flu, she's got the flu. She's not coming in. And I said, your nanny, Mike, you told me he was a hypochondriac and looked for any excuse not to come in. And he went, oh, yeah, we fired her. Uh, and I was like, oh, OK, because I'm, I'm, pa- I'm, all, I'm all about the patterns. Right. So I wouldn't have known Mike had a new nanny if he didn't tell me because I'm pattern right. driven. But I always push the pattern out to the person because he's telling me. This person is a Viking, and I think he's talking about the person that's a hypochondriac, right. and I want to know what changed, and, uh, well, what changed was we're talking about two different people. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, no. That's Loud Mike. clear. <laughs> so, um, pattern. So, I was, I, the pattern that I was always picking up on is, uh, why are we getting all our information out of Israel? Why don't we have our own information here? We, we're two years in. Where's all mm-hmm. our wealth of information from the CDC? And then why is it, you know, vax, 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 and we're not talking about therapeutics, and every time a therapeutic comes up, it gets poo-pooed, and so it's dangerous misinformation. But I said, all right, there's a pattern here, and I'm not sure who's behind it, but it's we're definitely being pushed a direction. Mm-hmm. Anytime... Like, if you see people being agnostic about things, then then there's no pattern. Right. You know, if you go, ivermectin, does it work? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it works for some people. I don't know. That's between Joe Rowe. But if you go, like, it's horse pace, then yeah. it's like, oh, oh, pattern. You've made up your mind. Right. There's some pattern. 
And uh, sometimes you go, well, is the pattern nefarious? Mm -hmm. Is there a bunch of, you can usually follow the money. Yeah. Who's getting paid? That That's the easiest way to find a pattern. And there's a political pattern, but it always kind of leads back to, to money. But now, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but the, the New York Times came out with something about uh, information and the CDC. And of course, we have to wait around for the New York Times because eventually the New York Times, even they at some point, they'll start doing their job and then they'll get on to something. And then you go, well, the Times are talking about it now, I guess. Now, now we can talk about it. Yeah, it's not, you know, some guy online who's right. got, you know, American flag sewed to his trucker cap. This is this is the New York Times. So here's the here's the article. Have this, you guys heard about this, no. yes. by the way? Oh, no. Okay, here it is. The CDC isn't publishing large portions of the COVID data it collects. The agency has withheld critical data on boosters, hospitalizations, and until recently, wastewater analyses. For more than a year, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has collected data on hospitalizations for COVID-19 in the United States and broken it down by age, race, and vaccination status. But it has not made most of the information public. When the CDC published the first significant data on the effectiveness of boosters in younger adults, younger than 65 to two weeks ago, younger than 65 two weeks ago, it left out the numbers for a huge portion of the population, 18 to 49 year olds, the group least likely to benefit from extra shots because the first two doses already left them well protected. Right. So pattern mm -hmm. and they want you to get vaccinated. Now, I don't know. If it's statistically not important that you get vaccinated, then it's not. You could tell us that, but mm -hmm. you don't, you'll not share that information with us because you've established a pattern. And that's now puts us in a weird realm because now the CDC speaks and you go, hmm, is that them or is that part of a pattern right. or are they leaving stuff out or what are they trying to get us to do? You can usually feel the pattern. You can feel the pattern on a more like social level where, <clears throat> I don't know, somebody just wants you to go to a party and you go, I don't want to go to the party. And then uh, they go, um, well, Bert, the guy showing the party really wants you there. And then you go, I don't really even know Bert. And then they go, um, <clears throat> you say to the person, really, Bert, really? Yeah, it's really important. And then you go, all right, I'm going to send Bert a text and see if this is important. Then they go, no, no, don't worry about Bert. <laughs> he told me. I need a designated driver. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's like, all Push right, a little harder. why are we pushing? Yeah. Why are we pushing about stuff? You, where's the energy right. yeah. coming from? And when you feel the energy and I just sort of float around feeling the energy, I just feel I, I study the pattern. Then I feel which way I'm trying to be pushed, but there's a line, it's a long article, you guys can check it out, but there's there's the one line in there, Dawson, I think you said where uh, they're saying, well, we felt, here's what it is, if you got it. Right, it's right here. Um, the CDC did say that um, their first answer of why they withheld this information was it wasn't ready for prime time. Mm. That's a weird way to put it. Yeah, uh -huh. right. SNL? Well, it's 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 data or it's not. Uh, yeah. It's here's how many people died of COVID right. in these ages or how many was hospitalized. What do you mean not ready? Not ready for prime time. And basically, if Dawson can find it, but I'll I'll paraphrase, which is you got it? Go ahead and paraphrase. The paraphrase is is if we let you see this data about eighteen to mm. forty nine year olds being boosted. We were scared that you would take that information yeah, and do something we didn't want with it, which is like, of course, you know, if, if I told the IRS all the cash I made when I do live shows, I'd be scared they would take that information and try to build. It's like, yeah, 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 that's we'll that's why. Yeah. That's just why you did it. And they essentially admit that it can't be that blatant, though. I don't know. I don't know where it is in the article, but Dawson quoted it to me before. Uh, I did, the show and now I'm started. having a problem finding it. All right. Well, for the I'll, record, I had heard about got this. It. Didn't realize the New York Times story, but I heard about the CDC not releasing certain information because it doesn't feel like the New York Times. Maybe it did not up. Yeah. yeah. Got yeah. it. The agency has been reluctant to make those figures public. The official said because they might be misinterpreted as the vaccines being ineffective. 
Mm. Misinterpreted. Well, it's just it's information. Right. We should just have the information. That's wh- that's what I've been saying the whole time. Where's the info? Well, it might be misinterpreted. Well, we'll do the interpreting. When I wanted to know how old the people were who were dying a year ago, that's just information. Mm. I'm allowed to interpret right. 89 years old all all I fucking want. You don't want me to interpret it that way because I don't. Um, well, I have a couple of 89-year-olds in my life, and I had a couple of 14-year-olds in my life. I don't care a lot about the 89-year-olds, but I do care a lot about the 14-year-olds. So if you don't tell me it's 89, then I may shift over to the 14, right. which is the pattern, which is what you want me to do. Yeah. And it's interesting because everything's gotten so politicized. They could still tell us and things would still probably fall where they yeah, fall now. That's what I was thinking. I don't think it would affect much either way. They just draw more attention to their own sort of deviousness by yeah. not releasing it. And now instead of having half the population not believe you, you have the whole po- population not believing you. And I assume the CDC is a bunch of scientists and uh, uh, doctors and virologists, et cetera, et cetera. Feel free to interpret for us yeah. for, for the people who want to interpret it. Yep. All right. Now, um, there's some hot uh, sandwich news. Oh, boy. Which I'm curious about. Literally like paninis? <laughs> no. Cheese steak? Well, could have been hot. I don't know. Um, Max Pata was eating a deli sandwich. Deli is, it's the best. Oh, yeah. The best sandwiches. And we couldn't figure out which one Brian didn't like. He did not like pastrami. Did I not love like pastrami. corned beef. Oh, corned beef. Didn't like corned beef. I love pastrami. Love. I love Maybe my favorite sandwich. Mm. I love pastrami as well. I don't know anyone else who loves pastrami and hates corned yeah. beef. I, no. I there's you got to make a decision: pastrami or corned beef. But it's usually one is a close, close second yeah. to the other. Not so. for me, I'm on it. There's a chasm. Wow. So what you have? What was your sandwich, Max Pata? So this was the number nineteen at Langer's. Oh yeah, the pastrami. Yeah, the famous so pastrami. Famous pastrami. Top pastrami, coleslaw. Swiss cheese, Russian dressing mm. on double baked oh, rye bread. I'm not exaggerating. This is a famous sandwich. The I, number 19. I knew what it was instantly. You did. It, it's like you're, you salivate just looking at this picture. Yeah, it's the amazing. best. It's yeah. porn. You got to get your. Did you mention the bread? Did you mention yeah, the bread? Yeah, d- twice, oh, okay. twice baked rye. Yeah, double baked rye bread. Yeah. Also, do we have. Um, I'm going to digress a little bit, but do we have single sided toasters? Because I mean, I've I mean, never like heard of it. Toaster oven? No, I mean, oven. like it only toasts one side. A toaster. Yeah. Interesting. Well, you do a bagel, or or a uh, oh, English like on the conveyor muffin. belt, like at the bagel place. No, I mean? just mean drop yeah. in single no. side. Never saw it. Never seen it. You'd have no, to they physically make them on a conveyor belt, though. That yeah, yeah. but yeah. people. Yeah, yeah to... no, I, there's a, like in a commercial application here, <laughs> but I'm talking. I would have... Yeah, I would imagine you have to physically disable it, like physically modify it. Somebody, to... there has to be a bagel uh-huh. and or English muffin toaster that just has the, the one inside side. doing it. Huh. Because if you get a bagel yeah, I... and or an English muffin, what do you need the backside done? Or even uh, even if you are doing like a bun, mm-hmm. like a brioche mm-hmm. bun or something may not fit. Hey, backsides mm. matter. I I agree, but I was I did make a um, I made a uh, egg salad sandwich. Mm-hmm. I was on a kind of a bun, and I just wanted the face toasted. This thing has to exist. I couldn't have invented this, and if yeah. not, yeah, uh, there there are one sided toasters, or they say just put your uh, toast in uh, in the oven on broil, put the broiler on. No, and just no I know all that. I just want to know somebody had to have stepped up and made an inside, <laughs> one-sided toaster. Huh. That's the first exist. time I've ever thought about it. It, it does exist. Like they, but I mean, they're they're rare. But, but I mean, like I'm in someone's that. house, like you can just oh, here's my one sided commercial toaster. applications only. Gina. Right? Yeah, it looks like a regular toaster, but there's a one sided. Huh. All you'd have to do is essentially disable the two outer ones yeah, the or outer the two element. inner ones. Yeah. And uh, I'd go with the inner ones because I have the buns facing yeah. the direction sure. God wanted them to go. That's but right. anyway, to it. Chris got the sandwich the way God wanted him to get the sandwich. And then he went on to tell me that uh, others in this workplace, oh, as no. we celebrate our 13 years, others get it on a bun. No. Um, so, 
Gary was nice enough to treat us because uh, he missed out of work for uh, for a while for COVID. So everyone was covering for him, so he he bought it and he did. Everyone ordered. Wait, he orders whenever he gets there, which we call over here the Gary Special, mm. which is the same thing but on a French roll. Okay, that's goy. Kind of, it's very goyish. Yeah. <laughs> it has oh, that why? French dip vibe, but it's not Ron a Jewish Delier jelly. gets it on a French roll too, right? Well, he also celebrates Christmas. Yeah. Well, yeah. Everybody, everybody here got it on a French roll except for me and Kalen. Yeah, it's it's a ratio. You've thrown off yeah. the bun to meat ratio with the French roll. You'd have to unhinge your jaw the way they do the wedge yeah. sandwich. How would That's you even true. get that in your mouth? The French roll, while lovely, has no business standing with pastrami. No, you know I mean? no, no. With coleslaw, please. Wasn't it Brian? Mm-hmm. I don't. Wasn't it Chaffee, Mike Chaffee, who when we used to go to Arts yeah. Deli? No, uh, 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 the other Mike. No, the one with the Kibitz room. Oh, Cantor's. Cantor's, Cantor's, Cantor's right? Deli. Yeah, 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 Cantor's. Right. After work every once yep. in a while. I'll tell you, is there is there anything better? The only thing I miss about morning radio is at like 545 declaring we're going to Cantor's after oh. the show. Mm-hmm. Something to look forward to. Or we're going to the Brazilian all-you-can-eat uh, steak yeah, place. Yeah, 10, 1045, we're going to Fogo to show. You're going to Fogo to show. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that trip? Yes. It was just... Oh, yeah. It was literally us at 1045 or 11 o'clock or whenever Foga de Chow opens and one single one fat solo guy, dude. one solo fat guy Hero. had his nose against the glass. What did we decide? Business clock. travel? I don't know. I, I would argue- Office time zone? Don't you guys have, is it rude to in a possibly con- complimentary way, like just walk up to someone and go, what gives? <laughs> or what, why are you here? Like you're you're wearing a suit. That's off putting. Yeah, you're alone. Mm-hmm. It's a weekday. What? What's, yeah. what you do you, to, are, do you can, live here? Are you traveling? You are you in a different time zone? Yeah. Is it eight thirty at night where you yeah. come from? You know? Tokyo. Well, that's right, mate. Is it a is it a conspicuous food critic that doesn't mind being noticed? Yeah, but <laughs> then <laughs> <Yeah>. twenty five <laughs> years in. <laughs> He could turn the table on us. Like, what are you four assholes doing in sweatpants? Right. You know, at Foga de Chow. Face dressed up. Right. 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 So, I don't know. There are times when I... (laughs) There's also the other one, too, where you and somebody else, everyone's betting against, and that guy's a businessman. No, he lives in town. Mm -hmm. No, he came Mm -hmm. here, you know... They should be able to settle that bet, right? Yeah, I, think I mean, that's the best way to go up and do it. Like, hey, we all have a bet what you're doing here. <laughs> uh, because now you've made the guy feel shame and paranoia. Yeah. So speaking of uh, horrible... Wait, Chaffee. Oh, Chaffee. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry. Chaffee got You had another mic in the Adam yep. Carolla show. Did it? Yeah, that sounds right. He got that what? Sounds right. He would do his deli sandwiches mm. with... Sourdough, hmm. but not. I mean, turkey and sourdough is fine. He would do like pastrami and sourdough. Yes, yes. Or, or borscht. Or would something. he put like mayonnaise on it? I I don't a remember. Miracle whip. I, I was I so put that. off by the sourdough. Call him up. And also, I found out. You know, I was oftentimes make him explain his crimes because of the wealth gap. Yeah. In between Chaffee and his, you know. Th- $39,000 a year and my, oh, my $1.7 yeah. million yeah. a year, I would feel obliged to pay. Yeah. But now I'm underwriting, like, like oh, I'll pay for your kid's fentanyl. Right. You're you know what I mean? Like, you can't it. sign off on that. Yeah, yeah. I, felt, I felt bad yeah. that I was supporting it. You're an enabler. Yeah, I was an enabler, right. But I do want to say to people this. Um, you should have, how about this rule? Right. You should have a... Favorite bread. Mm-hmm. I will I will grant you a favorite bread. And that bread will be ordered when one is eating breakfast and they ask you what kind of toast okay. you like. Okay. By all means, they if you like if you like the uh, white, get the white, yeah. the wheat, World whatever. When it comes to sandwiches, the bread is factored in quite heavily. Oh, yeah. It's part of the sandwich. Yeah. You're no longer allowed to take your favorite bread and graft it onto the sandwich. You fucked up the ratio and the flavor. Chaffee, he was probably a sourdough guy. Sure. Yeah. So when it comes time to order a sandwich, he gets it on sourdough. But my argument is many things were meant to go with many things. Mm-hmm. So when you When you order Greek food, you get... <laughs> Rice. When you order steak, you get a potato. 
Now, it's not like I like potato or I like rice. It's what comes what with this. With it's designed yeah. for this. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, instead of a pita, can I have a taco shell? Well, uh, doesn't work. Well put. Thank you. Right. Chaffee's order, yes, very well said. Uh, pastrami on sourdough, no mustard. Oh, my God. No mustard. Oh, oh man. All right. So uh, speaking of crazy uh, COVID, uh, I was uh, horseback riding. Oh, I saw look because at you. my Cowboy. my plea or my decree, Brian, mm-hmm. what, uh, his uh, New Year's resolution mm-hmm. was to give. Mine was to take. Yeah, I want to Perfect take fit. back from society. <laughs> on brand all around. Right. So, uh, no, is there a saddle there? There's a saddle. Yeah, He's Western say. style. And so here's the dealio. Um, you know the the woman. The woman who ran, ran the did they have you a guide to go up through the 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 the, the mountains of uh, Malibu are vast. Mm. People don't really realize it. It's a lot of federal land. Somebody owned it, then they gave it away to the state, mm-hmm. and it's just 140 acres of eh, basically looks like where they shot Mash. Was it Roy Rogers? Was no, someone... this was a this was a family. Oh, okay. I can't remember the, the name, but they had all the cattle and yeah. blah blah blah. This is all the Santa Monica Mountains, right? It's in the range, even though it's above Malibu. I okay. see. And the I said, so uh, how's it going? And she was like, well, you know, business been you know back on track now because what you do is you you get on the horse with the guide. And you just wander endlessly through these trails where you don't see a building and you don't see a person. Beautiful. And she said, uh, and she's, I, I got to tell you, man, when it comes to horses, people are either all, the people that are in are all in, man. It mm-hmm. is nothing but horse talk. They ride <laughs> mm. every day. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. yeah you're the clothing. Bill Shatner or Jim Carolla. Like yeah. you're, if you're out, you're out. Right. You're in, you're oh. in. And it's a whole trough world. Committed. It's a whole, like, she was, oh, we Thank take you. the horses. <laughs> trough committed. Take the horses and we take them down to, to uh, Santa Barbara and we ride on the beach and stuff. Like, they're they're nuts for horses. But so she rides them every day. So I said, uh, so wait a minute. How does COVID impact you? Because I feel like uh, it might help your business. People right. want to get outside. Perfect. Con- convene with nature. She's like, oh, no, they shut it down. They shut down all the trails. And she was like, I have a, uh, you know, I got horses. I got I to gotta exercise them. So I, I went out. And she's like, and I was like, was that all right? She's like, no, it was not. I had deputies stop Jeez. me. So that's what we do here in California. We assign deputies to go to the Arrest. mountains of Santa Monica because our tyrannical governor just made a decree. Like, no going to the beach. And uh, no, uh, nobody gets to go on trails. And... Uh, she was cited two times. Um, oh, please tell me she didn't pay that shit. She said she gets cited. Then she's got to go down to the courthouse. Then the courthouse just goes, yeah, fine. Uh-huh. Like, throw it away. Mm. But don't do it again. And then she goes and does it again. Then she gets cited again. It's, it's all the dance of the tarts. Oh. You see what I'm saying? Like the, how much energy is spent. And uh, thank <sighs> God, when they now then <clears throat> would you point out the picture we're looking at, which I assume is just her normal route or whatever yeah. she does, is in the middle of nowhere. It <laughs> is a field. Yeah, you're, you're you're the closest thing to you is dirt and reeds. And two people on a horse, like two people on two different horses, is naturally six feet apart at least. Yeah, it'd be hard to get close to someone. <laughs> yeah. That's literally what they say. They're not trying to do it for COVID reasons, but the horses sometimes get up the other horse's ass, Mm -hmm. in which case it could annoy the horse in front. It could get kicked or something. And then there are other times when you sort of fall back a Mm -hmm. little and you got to make that noise that I can't make. That's that noise, which they understand. And they'll go right up. But they tell you, stay like five, six Mm -hmm. feet back. So they literally... The way, to, the way to do it properly is the is the is a built-in social distancing. But uh, you're on quite a beautiful horse. She was uh, sighted. Yeah, the horse's name was uh, Sundance. Oh, that's right, like that. the great uh, Bob Radford. So um, she was sighted and sighted multiple times for walking on a trail alone with a horse. <laughs> and then, uh, I, as I always think back, I think back. Oh, thank Christ. So then you have to go back and you have to kind of sift through your life. And life is really just about time. 
and and sort of what you did with it. Mm. You know what I mean? So if someone said, uh, I just got done refurbishing my house. I painted every room. I put up all the molding, swung all new doors, and uh, a month later, it burned to the ground. And people go, oh, that was a shitty use of yeah. those six months. You know what I mean? And we all, all right, there's a lot of that. You go wash your car and it rains uh, the next day. Isn't or, it ironic? That's right. That's right. Don't you think? Yeah. yeah. So um, Alanis Morissette, I think, is going to come on this show. Oh, right. Right. So I'm looking forward to talking Holy to her. Holy shit. But uh, knife. then you have to go back and think about the six months this lady was getting cited and wasn't allowed to go. And how laughable, obviously, yeah. it is now. Especially when getting vitamin D and exercise and being outdoors and blah blah blah. And so what I I take that I take my red light arrow math. I don't want to burn that ninety seconds for no good reason. And I just extrapolate it into life. Right. So they shut down the horse trails at my house too. I ignored all the police tape and all whatever because I. I labeled it nonsense because they were saying one thing, but I was studying a pattern. And the pattern said to me, this is this is nonsense. I know what they're doing. I, I didn't, uh, you know, uh, crowded churches or sport, indoor sporting events or something. I was like, all right, fine. But uh, not the trail. Yeah. That, that's nonsense. So I labeled it nonsense. And then I ignored the rule like I would ignore the arrow because it's my fucking time and my life. And I don't want to look back and go, oh, there went. There's six months I'll never get back. Right. But I also, and you have to, uh, have, to, have to think about it this way, too. Uh, remember when the guy who worked for the government hopped out of the car and wanted to know uh, what I was doing on, with this horse trail. Because he saw, oh, right. oh, he was getting that. out of the car. Yeah, if he can ask, you can ask the guy at Fogo to show. He he was putting. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. He was putting the tape in front of it. Right. And uh, I'm also glad that when he uh, tried to dress me down, I told him to fuck off <laughs> because I would not have looked at. I would have looked at it as a waste of my time if I actually put my tail between my legs right. and went home. So. He got out of his car famously, started coming toward me. I was kind of dead to rights because I was crossing the street <laughs> and, you know, go going around the right. police tape. And he wanted to know where I was going and what I was doing. And thankfully, I have an agile mind. And he got out of his car and uh, he was like, hey, where are you going? Are you going on that horse trail? And I just went, where's your mask? Oh. And he said, it's in the car. And I said, well, a lot of good it's doing us in the car. You're endangering me. And he's like, what are you doing on the horse trail? I'm like, what are you doing? Where's your mask? He's like, I asked you about the horse. He's like, oh, I see how this is going to go. I was like, no, I want to know where your mask is. Where's your mask? You're in violation. And he was like, oh, uh, uh, but the horse trail. I was like, go get your mask. And uh, thankfully, Dr. Drew was on the phone with me and was laughing like an <laughs> insane person the entire time. And then I told him, you got to take those tank traps they used at Normandy. They put them on the beach. Oh, wow. Put those in front of the horse trail. That'll stop the taxpayers. And I told that guy to fuck right off. Beauty, I got a witness. Dr. Drew was on the other line. He was laughing hysterically. But I also was able to reclaim that. Yeah. You know, people always go, uh, oh, your proud moments. Oh, my achievement day. It's a proud moment. 13 years of podcasting. Great. But you also have, have the times where you told people to fuck off. Right. That, that's important as well. Right, Drew? Right. Hey, uh, Drew, I'm talking to this uh, overfishish jerk from the city. He doesn't want me to walk on the horse trail. Crazy. Yeah, man. Shit's going down. What are you, what are you doing? Watching TV or something over there? Uh, I, I... Huh? TV? Right, right. Now, I'm saying the shit is going down. I'm fighting for a freedom. I'm out on the street. What, what, what are you doing? You sound distracted. No, no, the phone is not on. The TV is not. On. I'm listening to you. You're listening to me, but you're not. You're not. I'm getting no reaction. I'm. I'm taking it to the streets. I'm like a Canadian trucker before the Canadian truckers were Canadian truckers. Yeah. All right, Drew. I. I just. I don't feel like this is inspiring you. Uh, well, sometimes I do. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> All right, Natasha Hensridge coming oh, in here boy. to help us celebrate. Got some calls coming. I got some more Crazy. stuff to talk about. 
Uh, yeah, I've went to church. I uh, went to church. I went to church. Uh, this is in my stuff I haven't done before. Right. What what denomination? Don't ask I don't, him this. I don't, Does I don't he know. have any I, don't, I, was all, in the 20s. I didn't all I was doing was watching the people next to me to figure out when to stand up sure. and then when to go Smart. back down. Did you receive the Eucharist? No, they were there was some COVID Eucharist thing where they were <laughs> like it is, <laughs> a <shoot>. weird. <laughs> yeah. You get away from <laughs> like the uh the tube at the bank. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Brian's got that. <laughs> There you go. I that, and then there's you know when you fold out the thing in front of you to kneel. Oh, yeah, I'm not I was, familiar. With I that. was just oh, it was Catholic thing. taking my cues from anyone oh, around me. Good for you. Uh, went to sea kayaking. Um, started to read a book. <laughs> I don't remember what it's called. Well, he before. did say one hour, so that, right. maybe that Ooh. was the whole hour. All right, let me tell you about something you should uh, think about in the new year. Master spas, considering a backyard makeover. Wish you had room for a pool. We can get the Michael Phelps swim spa from Master Spas combined. It combines the uh, benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub, man. Has a water current, so you got something to swim against. Get a good workout without doing that 80-foot lap pool. Uh, you can do aquatic exercises, have fun with the kids. Comes in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even a small backyard. These things will fit in there. Since it's heated, you can use it year-round in any climate. 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. You'll love your Michael Phelps swim spa by Master Spas. It's a beautiful piece, and it's uh, it's good for... Uh, Good for what ill what uh how's that ails you yeah. ails ills you. Good for what ails you. It's Master Spa, right, Dawson? Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code Adam to save a thousand dollars on a Michael Phelps swim spa or five hundred dollars on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code Adam. All right, take a quick break. Back with more right after this. And now a totally innocuous word that sounds dirty when Mike Dawson says it. Thirteen. No. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. All right. <clears throat> hmm. Got a call up there. Hey, I'm- um, I we went we spent five hours over the weekend going to open houses, a little house hunting just to mm-hmm. see kind of what's what's doing in the valley. And I'm so sorry I couldn't get a recording of it. I tried twice, but I heard something so unsettling that I would like to put it out there and to know if any of you have ever heard this. Mm -hmm. We went to Encino, and of course, the houses were gorgeous and amazing, and of course, that's what I wanted. And then went to Burbank, it was fine. Went to North Hollywood. Then we went to Van Nuys, Mm. just to see what's what. Mm -hmm. So you got to start Van Nuys. I know. To get the Vans. The cheapest house we could find was $899, so Mm $900,000. And it looked beautiful on, you know, the Redfin and the Zillow. And, you know, I just, I wanted to see Everything. What's they, going on out there? They list it for eight ninety nine, but you can ju- talk them down. You know, probably G- quite a bit. Yeah, it, they, we can what? G- uh, talk. Chip. Uh, 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 no. Negotiate. Negotiate. Oh, yeah, I thought I heard something with a J. Um, they negotiate were- them down. <laughs> Shit. From eight ninety nine. Well. Unless it's one of those things where they do the, you better come in over eight ninety nine, or it's an insult, Brian, which is a weird, scary world. That's kind of what I was going to say, was oh. at every place they said, well, we're doing it a little low, but we know oh, it's going to go over. Get, yeah. So we go to a neighborhood, they called it North Hollywood, it was Van Nuys. Mm-hmm. It looked like a fucking war zone. Everyone had what I now dub the fool me once gates up that looked like they were kind of put up in a hurry. Like everyone just suddenly had gates around their houses. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, but this one house is kind of nice and they're fixing it up and just wanted to see it. We get out of the car. We open the door. We get out of the car. We close the door. We start walking. That was enough motion to have a recording from across the street with two like um, gas station like like liquor store cameras pointed at us and say, attention, you are being recorded. Attention, wow, you wow. are being recorded. It was like the purge. Have you guys ever seen this? Have you been in a neighborhood that would have this? Thankfully not. <laughs> no, I, I will definitely tell you that a lot of these neighborhoods, as you get into the valley and you get into the price range of the homes that you can afford, are predominantly Hispanic. And the Hispanic Hispanics build fences and mm, gates, mm. and they look a little haphazard because they are, because the guys <laughs> they are. have a 
have a, bu- a building background, yeah. but fabricating steel gates is a different <laughs> specialty mm-hmm. within building, uh-huh. and that costs a lot of money. So they end up doing this thing where it's like, uh, they demo a house, and the house has a big wrought iron gate mm-hmm. or something on it, so they go, oh, shit, we'll take that, and they take that. Then they know block work. They know cinder block work. So you see the block wall mm. up in front, and then the gate, it's not really sized for mm. that application. Yeah. They'll somehow kind of make it make it work. Make it work. So you see yeah. a lot of block work mm-hmm. and a lot of concrete work. If you Indeed, see, I did. If you see a lot of masonry, mm-hmm. like a lot of, oh, you could tell that was a carport that somebody <laughs> enclosed and then they stuccoed it. If you see a lot of stucco yeah. and a lot of block work, that's a Hispanic. Okay. I see. It's basically like, remember that time? I don't know where we went. Was it Martin's Barbecue? Oh, Franklin's? Franklin's in uh, Could have been Franklin's. Austin. Yeah, probably Franklin's, not Martin's, although I've been to both. But went into Franklin's. And uh, we were like getting our food and going sitting out in the patio, and they're bringing us the food in and the everything. back. Yeah, yeah. In the yeah. back. And we and toured the, the the barbecue Smokers pit. And it was all very wonderful. It was awesome. I, because this is what I do, I started looking around, and uh, you know, I uh, I judge, but I also try to figure out the pattern. Mm-hmm. I pattern judge. You know what I mean? I started noticing like all the storage shelves and everything. It was all made out of metal. And it was handmade. Like somebody was making these things where normally you'd put up a two by 12 and uh, put a four by four under it or something, storage or something. This was all metal. Okay. So I just started looking around on the gates and the storage and everything looked like a welder. And then I said, uh, what's going on with that here? And the, the guy was like, uh, oh, the boss is a welder <laughs> or used to be a welder or something like and that. So I went, right. Because that's. That's how you work. Right. So in the neighborhoods you're looking at, those guys sling a lot of stucco during the day and they make a lot of block walls Mm. during the day. And on the weekends, they ain't welding. They're slinging more stucco and putting up more block walls. That's what you're seeing. And it's also... I'm going to sit tight for a while. It's also a lack of greenery as well. yes. Because in their world... A, a lawn is a fool's errand. You got to water it. You got to weed it. You got to you got to put in irrigation. Why not just pave over that? So like, much pavement. So much. See, what do oh, I know, Gina? Everything. <laughs> right. Gates <clears throat> with pavement behind it. Right. Just pave and endless pavement because it's like, what do you want a lawn for? You have to deal with the lawn. And the pavement, you could park your truck there and have another place to work on a car. There were four, um, not yellow cab, but the other cab company cars parked behind the gate where the lawn would be. Right, right. Like independent cab. The lawn would have been if it had not been paved over like uh, Joni Mitchell was uh, talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. But it's a theme. It sure is. it's, It's folks who work... Look, when you go to when you go to Mexico, that's what you see. You see blocks. Every everything is made of of cinder block. You know what I mean? It's it's that's their yeah. It's essentially their expertise. Yeah, and it, and it's their major. Right. Do they accumulate like a few extra here, a few extra there off the job, a few extra there? And next thing you know, they got enough for a project. Is there a, is there a resourceful in this? I, I've worked on enough job sites where the. Some of the stuff goes into the dumpster, and then other stuff is like, hey, I'll use that sink, yeah, why not? you know, because I'm, I'm stuccoing my carport, and we're going to make a bootleg bathroom in there, and I'm going to take the sink. Yeah, that's how that's okay. how people work. I think we're going to wait to pull the trigger. <laughs> how crazy, like when you would go to Encino. Oh, my God. Well, I didn't want to, I'm not trying to want to kill myself, so mm-hmm. I capped it. At, I don't want to go see the two and a half million dollar houses because that's not what we can afford. And I don't mm-hmm. want to would want everything else to be soured. Mm-hmm. But we went to one and a half and they were beautiful. They were they were, you know, between seventeen hundred, eh, seventeen hundred feet and all redone and beautiful appliances and big open concepts that they had just remodeled. But the husband got a job out of town. And I mean, that's the life for me. All right. So now uh, a problem unrelated to this. I've told you guys the act of putting something away is uh, on behalf of another Mm -hmm. person is noble 
except for when it's when you do not inform the other person. Right. We've been through this. Which is um Oh, I see. As uh and and also when normally kind of responsible sober people can't find stuff usually yeah. means somebody got involved. Famously uh, Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, left his sunglasses on like the table in the shop back there. And then he kind of, like called me like, Can you see my sunglasses around? I was like, no. And then, whatever. well, Nate had retrieved them on went trophy in, case. into his office, put them on a shelf where you couldn't see him and never said anything yeah. to anybody. But they're safe. And I kept going, I, you know, but Matt's a sharp guy. So right. Matt said, I took my sunglasses off. I left them on the table. Then where are they? And then I had to go right. scour around. And then a week later, I saw him sitting over there. I when we went to thirteen coins, we uh, the the thing. Refresh us. What is that? Oh, sorry. Thirteen coins is a legendary upscale diner. I would call it an upscale diner, but it's it's legendary in the Seattle area. Uh, Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I many years ago met Bean of Kevin and Bean over thirteen coins to have breakfast when I was doing some shows uh, in Kirkland, Washington. Uh, 35 minutes outside of Seattle. And uh, we'd been traveling all through Spokane and wherever else. Tacoma. Uh, Tacoma. We've been traveling everywhere. And so we, uh, I said, oh, we should go to 13 Coins. Mm-hmm. It's great. Beautiful. They have, uh, got to remind me. Uh, we went there, didn't we? We, I, You, me, Dawson, Brian. I think we we went there when we were in Seattle. I will, I will mm. say this. I, I will say this. Please hear me. You go there and you, it looks or, familiar. you you order breakfast. That's that's what you order. And they do a great breakfast. And part of the reason they do a great breakfast is because they do hash browns as you know them. Mm-hmm. Not God new intended. potatoes, no. not red potatoes, Cotted not cute potatoes. Listen, there's no place in, in where anywhere I'm at in SoCal where I get the Hash browns. The shredded all, crispy. They're up. Yeah, they're highfalutin. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, uh, it's, it's we're back to the bun conversation. I'm not saying this isn't good. I'm saying it doesn't work with what I'm doing because you got to get the little piece and a little Tabasco mm-hmm. and a little ketchup and then a little bite of egg and sausage and and try to get it all balanced perfectly into your mouth. And the fucking little mini red potato doesn't work into that fucking equation. But there is no. And again, it, if I'm in charge, it, it, it shall be if you're. If you have breakfast on your menu, you shall have hash rounds. If you'd like to do your fucking highfalutin red potato squares or whatever it is you're going to do, fine. Mm -hmm. Not many will order it. Fine. (laughs) You shall do that. But I need this here first. Yeah. And it's oh, it's, it causes me anxiety. Like, oh, we're going to go to breakfast. I'm like, oh, am I going to get my hash hash rounds? Sitch. Well, they got it there. Oh boy. And it was perfect. Perfect. Now, Chris wanted to order. Let's see. Eggs, I got eggs Benedict. Okay. Right. But Delicious. then he saw there was crabs Benedict. Oh. No, well, they, well, you can you can sub the Canadian ham for Dungeness crab for not $4. Eggs, not eggs Benedict. How That's dare you? crab. <laughs> You've ruined, now you're going a different direction. <laughs> you, hey, you may like crab. That I is fine. I love crab. But it's now not eggs Benedict anymore. Well, Needs whatever the they called, bank. I wanted that. Yeah, right. I'll say, Chris, that's the local ferry, man. You're in Seattle get yeah. the seafood. Well, there. we'd already struck a deal. <laughs> yeah, we did. It's too a late deal had to be struck. Well, he mentioned that he was eyeballing the sausage omelet. Mm-hmm. I was eyeballing the Benedict, but a too big a commitment for mm-hmm. me. Okay. So I said, I will give you half of my omelet, and you give me half of uh, the Benedict, and then we'll have a nice balance. But uh, there shall be no crap. Yeah. Then he wanted to order it on the side. I, was I couldn't just I couldn't take say it that. anymore. <laughs> There's too much food, Chris. I know you better no. than you know yourself. I, I could have easily finished that. I couldn't take it. I, I well, the whole time I'm just thinking, what would it have tasted like with the crab? Oh, we've been delectable. Well, next time you pay and then yeah. you order all the fucking <laughs> that crab you want. That was my Touché. next next but question. <laughs> not when I'm uh, footing the bill for this. <laughs> well. I, I told you, I don't know where wherever we just were, fair that the big keto thing now is to put your eggs Benedict on a thick sliced tomato mm-hmm. instead of an English muffin. And I don't abide by that. Mm. I mean, I guess if you're 
adhering to keto fine, but it doesn't taste yeah, right. Certain things are off, yeah. the, off the menu. It, it, in that it case. was uh, it was no excellent. French toast. Sorry, Sorry. You can't have your version. You just can't <laughs> right. have French toast. Yeah, it was uh, it was delectable, and uh, but here's what happened. So we all piled in, and because we've been used to traveling everywhere else, as soon as we walked in, now we're in Seattle. Mm-hmm. We got different rules because they're fucking pussies right. or something. Seattle, Canada, I, you know, Los Angeles, the county, the kids have to wear masks outdoors or whatever. Whatever the fakakta rule is in your little place that doesn't exist outside of your place, but somehow you stand by it. And then we pulled in and they're like, we need our, we need the Vax cards. And we're all a little caught off guard because we've just been traveling yeah. airplanes, airports, other restaurants, hotels, you know, yeah, and all of a sudden it's, it's like produce, produce that Vax card. Randomly, we'd been in 11 other establishments, comedy clubs, airports, <laughs> hotels, restaurants, and no one wanted a Vax card. Right. And then all of a sudden we need your Vax card. And I was like, oh. Shit, I got a picture of it on my phone somewhere, but I don't know how to work my phone. So I started looking through the pictures. Turns out I have like 800 pictures of Phil <laughs> in my phone, but nice. I uh, no Vax card mm. or it's somewhere in there. So what I did is I, I went, oh, hold on. And I was wearing my sunglasses when I walked in and I took my sunglasses off initially when I walked in when the guy said Vax card. And I was like, oh, let me get my glasses on so I can read my phone and I set the sunglasses on top of the table where the greeter was because I thought it was going to take me two minutes to find this and then I would but mm-hmm. instead it wasn't it wasn't happening and other people were piling in and they were like are we are you in front and I'm waiting you know just more of the dance of the tards so I was like oh okay so then I walked outside because it was all by the front door and I just want to let people get in line sure. and I didn't want to get in the way so I went outside and uh, took Mike 10 minutes to find a picture of his Vax card. And Chris, of course, had his and or had a picture of it or on his phone, a QR code, whatever. And, and I said, just go in and get the table. Let me go find mine. At a certain point, it became apparent I could not find the picture. So then I was like, oh, shit, they're sitting at the table. It's been 10 minutes. And I went, hmm. And I looked and there was a new guy working the counter. All right. New and chance. He, and he was surrounded yep by people who mm-hmm. wanted to get a table. I'm like, I'm just going to walk in and slide yeah. right past this yeah. guy and sit at my table. And then I was like, oh, shit. I left my sunglasses <laughs> on the counter where the guy is. Yeah. Yunk. Where he doesn't want, I don't want to see no. this guy. I'm going to walk in past behind everyone who's surrounding him at the counter. But I left my sunglasses Gotta there. sacrifice the sunglasses. I'm like, good, 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 good. So like, I, I kind of slide in and I see he sort of turns away and I, put my head over like look at the sunglasses and they're not sitting where I left oh, them no. well, he just grabbed them and set them down behind the counter I'm like, looking over the thing but I'm trying to hustle because I don't want him to eye contact I don't want the other guy to come back after like no, sitting no, that's somebody. the worst case scenario so I go in and uh, sit down and I'm like shit where am I uh, doing it? and Mike's like I got your sunglasses I took your sunglasses which is an awesome move but when you don't tell yeah, me, that's got to yeah. be communicated. That's yeah. text him. That's the part. Yeah. Don't text that's him. That's the part. <laughs> I would have. Busy. <laughs> I would have got it if I was looking for my phone. Hey, uh, can hmm. someone who 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 uh, Matt or Chris or someone who cares about Adam, uh, please put his Vax card on his home screen as like his wallpaper? Ooh, because <laughs> he'll just turn the phone on. Boom, there it is. Yeah, there's a QR code. Chris did something with it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I favorited it. So it's in it's one of your uh, So that and fourteen thousand pictures of Phil. <laughs> he doesn't favor it all. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Got a couple of calls up here. Start at the top. Manny Forty, San Dimas. Hey guy. Hi guy. Hey, hey, how's it going? Good, man. What's going on? Hey, uh, before I get to the Askis Rodeo, I wanted to um um uh, talk about this um Baseball card that was uh, tweeted at you. It's uh, Jack Clark. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's a doppelganger of yours. Yeah. But I wanted to mm. see if you, what you thought of uh, Hansi Cronje, the world famous cricket player that was featured in Bad Sport. Oh, I did not see that one. I have. There's another baseball player. I think it was a Met. Uh, and I'll think of his name because um, Jimmy and Daniel. Two sheets. Always thought I looked uh, like this guy. You'll know M- him. Mookie Wilson. A, yep. Or Bats. It was. Now, uh, All Star from the 60s, and I can't think of the uh, guy's name. But no, I didn't see it, but 
but thanks. And we'll look up the other guy. Jack, Jack Clark, Clark looks like a cross out. between Adam and Vinny. Yeah, Jack, oh, Clark. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Clark, my dad's favorite player of all time. Really? Wow, yeah, random. love Jack Clark. All right, uh, what do you got, Manny? All right, so I wanted to congratulate you on your uh, achievement day. But I also wanted oh, to... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Another... I think I got the guy. The guy. Uh, Ed Cranepool. Oh, yeah, I've seen this. That's has uh, tweeted at us a few times. Yeah, sorry, Manny. Go ahead. Uh, no problem. So I wanted to point out a second achievement day, uh, December 6th, 2021. Mm-hmm. Is the day that uh, 97.1, your old radio station, flipped formats again, and you actually outlasted um, the new format. But they're back to uh, talk. That, that replaced <laughs> you. So they're they're back to KNX, like, oh. news radio. Yeah, they're on news radio. Casting. Yeah. I got room on so, my dial for news radio. I, I do listen to it. And I, I I can't say that I enjoy it, but it's like, it's it's there. It's it's like, yeah, all right, exactly. we'll get the news. Wasn't that your station? Mm-hmm. Mine? No, KFI. It was oh, my dad's. KFI. My dad's for 30 years. Mm-hmm. Do you guys remember, I think I'm right, the first song that was played when we flipped from KLSX to AMP? It yeah. had had to be like something horrible, like Fergie, Lady Lumps mm-hmm. or something. Close. Spears and- it was Britney Spears. Oh, yeah, I yeah. believe it was Toxic. Oh, right. Yeah. Because we were all in there drunk crying. Uh, Andy, 42, Albuquerque. Mijo. Mijo. Woof, woof, woof. How's it going, guys? Bald, Good. Gina, Adam, hey. thank you hey so there. much. Congratulations on on 13 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, bald, bald, I wanted to say uh, I think you really got your fastball, and you're, you're throwing in the oh. in the high 90s for sure. Yeah. And Thanks, it's, man, been, it's been a pleasure to listen to, to you really – get that fastball back over the last last um, year or so. I appreciate so that. It, I think I'm still I got room to go, trip. but uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And Adam, thank you so much for, for everything you do. Um, I travel for work and I'm, I'm stuck on a plane and you're the way that I, I start my morning every day. been with you since the first episode, since you used to, to go on, on uh, the Bill Simmons podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, found yeah. you that way, and and been listening ever since. And I hope you can do it for another thirteen years. Yeah, thanks, Andy. We need, yeah, we I need mean, your voice, and we need your we need your crystal brain. It's crazy. Uh, like I've said before, but when I used to do Bill's podcast, and he was out of his little garage in a little house, and uh, on the west side, Ace hey, Man, do the pot, and he didn't have the technology <laughs> to have two microphones. So Did you like doo-wop singers? I had to call in <laughs> oh. in order to be on the air with him and his one microphone, and I could only call call in using his portable phone, not his cell phone. <laughs> Calling in from my driveway. Right. Adam Grohl. <laughs> yeah, and if I stood next to him, there'd be reverb or back echo or something, so I just would stand in the driveway outside of the garage it's a commitment. And, and do the podcast. Wow. That's where podcasting was 14 years ago. Uh, thanks. All right, a couple more calls because Natasha Henstridge is here and we cannot make her wait. No. Oliver. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Oliver, 42, Los Angeles. What's going on? Hey, Adam, how are you? Hi, guy. How are you doing? Good. Hey, hey Bald, how are you doing, Gina? Hey. Hi. Hey, so i got a quick question. I have a job interview coming up, but it's kind of like the seventh or eighth step of the interview in which I have to come in to kind of like a one percenter private school and kind of be both auditioned in front of the full faculty of the school, but also get interviewed by the kids. Uh, And I thought thought that you would love that. Why the kids? Because the children are the future, Adam. Uh, Do you give homework? (laughs) Wow. <laughs> When's pizza day? So I wanted I wanted to get your thoughts on it, both get your thoughts on it and kind of like get your read on how I should kind of walk in and be presentable to a group of faculty that kind of, you know, have that air of impress me good luck with their arms folded. What is them. this? What is this place? School. It's like a private. It's a private school. Uh, seven through twelfth graders oh, here in LA. Oh. Not, they are not going to make this easy. Christ. What What's the theme of the school? Like some are religious, Rich. some are sort of progressive. <laughs> you know, what do you it's got? It's not religious. It's private. It's private. Not religious. I'm auditioning for instru- head chair of instrumental music, so I have to teach a lecture on. How about you know, just class of play the choice. piano and say any questions? <laughs> yeah, I I would. Um, 
I here's here's what I would do. I would have a couple of jokes mm. chambered because I think that's going to get him. I, I think the 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 joke is going to get him. Mm-hmm. I think if you had a couple uh-huh. of jokes, that would set you apart from anyone. Everyone likes you. They're laughing. But what are we talking about? Are we talking <clears throat> musical instrument jokes? Are we talking puns? What are we doing? Keep it clean, safe. Yeah, yeah. keep it safe. Uh, yeah, musical puns are good. Yeah, don't no Gilbert Godfrey stuff. <laughs> Try to keep the Asians out of it. <laughs> no aristocrats. <laughs> yeah, I I would have a couple of jokes chambered. I feel like that that's gonna be that's gonna get you. That'll get you through. Okay. Who is the funny okay. people? Victor, Victor Borga. Victor Borga. Yeah, couple watch a few of, Victor Borga videos on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, just say like the great Victor Borga says, <laughs> and then all the eighth graders' faces will light up and they'll sit up. That's great. Didn't Victor Borga do, you should do this, when he plays the 1812 Overture upside down and then turns it over and plays it correctly. <laughs> he does that. Do Victor Borga's bit. He'd do the move, I think, where you went all the way down the scale and then fell off. Yeah, these like are good. Well, Pratt do, falls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, look up Victor Borga. <laughs> Time. Are, are, you, are you a good pianist? Uh, yes, but it's, I, I play a, bunch of different instruments yeah mm. let's not worry about that oh oh i got an idea you mm. know do you have one of those looping machines can you bring all the instruments <laughs> in and like impress the shit out of the kids and the faculty you know what i'm mm-hmm. talking about right i do know i do know exactly all of it i could That's, do that yeah. do that <clears throat> do it do that look up victor borga and have a couple of jokes chamber yeah. good good advice thanks um, my grandfather loved that guy yeah uh all right last one lisa 53 53 massachusetts lisa <laughs> Hi, guy. Hi, guy. Hey. So I started watching you and my recently divorced husband, thank Christ, uh, start, introduced me to the man show in the late 90s, and I heard your voice somewhere, and I picked you up about two or three years ago, maybe four, uh, as a podcaster. I was discovering podcasts, and your voice, as well as Gina's, as well as Ball's, I got to tell you, I grew up. I'm a little bit older than you are, uh, Adam. I can't believe I'm I'm actually talking to you. I'm older than you are. I'm older than you are. No, you're not. uh, It doesn't matter. Uh, Anyway. Well, she may have told the screener about (laughs) me. No, no, no. I I, I shaved a couple years off my age, but not too many. Oh, okay. Anyway, I I also have a very secret crush on you. I could, oh, God, what I could do to you in bed, Jesus. Anyway. Wow. Really? I don't know if you're available, but give me a shot. I'm a very attractive, uh, uh, very athletic woman. Besides the point, mm. I Is grew it? up I grew up loving the radio. Yeah, if you just want someone to, you know, like have, have sex with for a few years until you meet your future missus, or mm. call me. Lisa's you offering her number, rebound right? skills. Anyway, yeah. something I really want to tell you that means the most to me, and no, no joking, I connect with the radio. The radio connects to people who respond to language in a way that doesn't with others. I don't like TV. It makes me, it makes me like, I can't sit still far, but, but a well, so I don't know the radio in your voices, your authentic voices, Adam, you've heard it for a million really, you know, really smart superstar people. And Brian, I, I don't know you as well. What I got to tell you is your gem the, the the pride of your show is Gina. Oh, she takes uh, to we the gotta American go, uh, people uh, let the and woman talk. your show so real and so palatable, despite all the crazy ass shit that you say. And I believe with ninety, believe with ninety nine percent of what you say. I don't uh, want to take over my. Does he offer stand for Gina? Gina? I was going to say. Best. Thank you, thank Lisa. you, thank you, Lisa. How thank beautiful. you for the kind words. <laughs> All right, Natasha wow. Henstridge is uh, waiting in the wings. Lots Speaking of love to, lots yeah. of love to you, Natasha. <laughs> First, I will tell you about BetterHelp. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp wants to tackle the stigmas around mental health. Therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. We take care of our bodies. We exercise. You go to the doctor. You eat well. How about we focus a, a little on our minds? That's important as well. BetterHelp, customize online therapy, offering video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to uh, see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Much more affordable than in-person therapy, and uh, we don't have to deal with the stigma of waiting and seeing the other folks in the waiting room and all that. Um, 
therapy, uh, you can be matched, by the way, with a therapist in under 48 hours. So let's get going with BetterHelp, right, Dawson? See why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. And Adam Carolla Show listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash Carolla. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash Carolla. All right. The great Natasha Henstridge. Forgot she was in the whole nine yards. Yeah. And uh, been tons and tons of uh, movies. And uh, she's coming in studio right after this. The Adam Carolla Show presents Natasha Henstridge's birthday cocktail party for August 15th. Let's see who's invited. Let's welcome American chef, author, and television personality, Julia Child. The guy who sang Jingle Bell Rock, Bobby Helms, is here. The representative from California, Maxine Waters. From Hee Haw, Don Rich is here. Former Oakland Raider, we welcome Gene Upshaw. The first woman to captain a Boeing 747, Beverly Burns is here. Now entering, it's Bill's ex-wife, Melinda Gates. Ben Affleck is here. American gold medalist, beach volleyball player, Carrie Walsh. Jennifer Lawrence has joined the party. And the former emperor of France and aspiring stand-up comedian, Napoleon Bonaparte. Natasha Henstridge is on the Adam Carolla Show. Natasha Henstridge in studio. Good to see you again, my dear, after all of these years. It's been a long, long time. Yes, indeed. So let's take a little walk down uh, memory lane with you. Jenny, you want a a bowl? Yeah, we'll grab some. (laughs) I uh, I had champagne. (laughs) I had a good friend who worked as first AD on Species, by the way. Oh, my God. I remember you guys filming in like Venice Beach, California or something in like 1994, 95. That's right. Yeah. So you were, you were, you're Canadian, you're a model. Mm hmm. Let's uh, we'll pick it up from there, and we'll wow. work our way up to uh, the current day. Oh my God, this is a lot of pressure. I'm gonna, I gotta go way back there. I'm too old to remember all that stuff now. I mean, a <laughs> um, model ended up moving to Paris and then New York. Always wanted to act, but ended up kind of traveling around the world, doing a little bit of modeling, and um, ended when I when I ended up going to New York. I was 14, 15 years old. Moved to Paris, did that for a couple of years. I ended up going to New York and really love acting and ended up having a TV commercial agent who would send me out on some commercial auditions and stuff. Can I ask a naive question? When you're a 14, 15 year old model traveling the world, <laughs> is there a chaperone? Is there somebody who's in charge? Like it feels very irresponsible. But... Not in a million years would I let my kids do it. Okay. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I actually had a pretty good head on my shoulders. Uh, you know, I could have had a chap. My parents could have come, except that they had a seven-year-old son at home. So it mm-hmm. makes it really mm-hmm. difficult to leave your other kid sure. and um, and break, you know, uh, your marriage and the whole mm-hmm. thing. And they did not want to let me go, but I was a little rebellious little brat. And I was like, I'm going. And, you know, I had this really great opportunity. I won a, a, a contest. And so it was just a great opportunity to go. Um, and then the modeling agencies, of course, they assure you that you oh, have... Yeah. We got oh, it. We she's going to be in a model department. Oh, around the clock care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not at all. You get to the agency and they're like, "Here's 20, 20 you know, ghosties at the time they were called. Mm-hmm. Have at it." And I was just like, well, "I don't even know how to get around. What's the public transpo? You know, I mean, I had no clue." So you learn quick. So and, were you yeah. leaving? Uh, I'll put it in your parlance: grade eight <laughs> or grade <laughs> nine you know of it. Canada? Yes. Like, literally, as a ninth grader, yes. just. Going yeah. to Paris. Wow. Yeah, and eighth New York. and ninth grade, and I went and I left for a f- few months and came back for a few months, and then I was like, I had the bug, and I just really loved being a child of the world. I really did. I just didn't look back. I never really looked back. Wow. Yeah. What your parents do? Um, my mom's a homemaker and a hairdresser. She was a hairdresser, but it's very difficult to be a hairdresser when you have sort of social anxiety so I don't think she thought that one through <laughs> she used to she doesn't anymore at all but mm. she used to be very nervous and around other people like a little bit agoraphobic I mm. would even say that's just me Dr. Henstridge here mm-hmm. diagnosing her <laughs> but, but if I had to guess 
Um, so she did that for a while, helped with my dad's businesses, that sort of thing, and raised us little hellions. And that that's mm-hmm. a job in and of itself. But and you were in Newfoundland for some of that? Time? Well, Newfoundland until I was about five years old and then moved to Alberta on the other side of the country in northern Alberta until I was 14, almost 15. Because yeah. that's in the, in North America that for me, that's the most remote place I can think of. It's it's pretty it's it's pretty remote. I mean, it's yeah, we call it the rock. You know, right. it's like welcome out in to the, the rock. Ro- welcome to the rock. Yeah. It's out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and it's pretty desolate. Um the thing I think is so cool about it is I feel like people still trade goods. Mm. I always think <laughs> that's really interesting. Yeah. It's literally, but it's just the community vibe mm. of the place, you know? You make bread, you went moose hunting. I mean, it's that kind of thing. It's so, which by the way is very chic and in, in fashion again now, right? right? Sure. Yeah. Farm to table right. was just like, that's just how we did, <laughs> did it there. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, I bartered when I was poor, like yeah, right here in the mm. San Fernando Valley. Mm. I had a, I got, I had an old Honda. It needed a, needed a timing belt. <laughs> I wasn't really good enough to do the timing belt. I could do work on cars, but not the timing belt. And, but I was a carpenter and I pulled in some place in like Van Nuys, probably sure. where you're looking at houses yeah. and they did timing belts on Hondas. And I was like, I could build you a display cabinet <laughs> if you'll do my, and they were like, yeah, I'll, Especially if you if you mm-hmm. give them, you know, if the timing belt is four hundred bucks, and you give them seven hundred bucks worth the display yeah. cabinet, they're like Why they're not? in. It makes absolute sense. I mean, that style of kind of being kind of makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, we've gotten used to obviously buying everything, which right. is fine too if you have the money. But well, what <laughs> yeah, is there to barter nowadays? Like social media posts, <clears throat> right? For, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Actually, yes. Or data entry. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's actually a tangible thing. You're right. Yeah. yeah are no, you in Canada crazy. now? Where are you? No, I live here in LA. I oh, you do? LA. Yeah, I live in the valley. I live. Oh, you don't uh, say. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. We're bouts in the valley. Gina's looking for a house. Oh, I'm sure we'll be neighbors soon. Well, I'm actually temporarily in a house. I moved to an area for my son's homeschooling program, which sounds really bizarre because I moved to <laughs> the area. It could be anywhere. Right. It really could be anywhere. You'd Dasha. think. <laughs> you'd think. But I know that's what everyone says. They're like, wait, you moved to that area for your son's homeschooling program? Yeah. Um, in Tarzana. I'm in Tarzana. Lovely but I'm Tarzana. actually leaving. So Tarzana, you're, yeah. <clears throat> you're modeling as a young person. Yeah. You're dealing with, I'm guessing, creepy people abroad in, in New York. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I've had my experiences, as anyone who has Google can probably read about at this point. But um, I've had my experiences, but I have to say, yes, yes is the answer. But I, I feel like I got through a lot of it pretty unscathed, especially when I was young and living in Paris. And yes, I had people follow me and I've had people grab me and I've had... Definitely experiences, but I, f- but at the end of the day, when I look at how bad it could have been, I go, mm-hmm. wow, I got lucky. Mm. And I watch a lot of murder shows, and I think about all the sure. bad luck that I've seen on those sure. shows and how I should have actually had much worse luck because I was very fearless, mm. very fearless. Um, but I definitely had some weird stuff. I happen, feel that way sure. about trips to Tijuana. <laughs> I was like, I did all the shit they said not to right. do. Right. You're here to tell the tale. I slept on the beach. Mm. Yeah. Just went to the beach with a blanket and just slept in Tijuana. Sl- passed out in an alley behind uh, a bar and got woken up by a cop. But I, I, it's 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 a weird thing. It's like it's the fall that doesn't look like much that paralyzes you. It's never the one where you go <laughs> ass over tea kettle and sailing into the air. That person always seems to get up and dust themselves right. off. I know. And I think mm. if you go in a way, if you're in the middle of it, you're statistically, or I don't know if it's statistically, but in a way you're safer. Like we didn't go to Tijuana and try to be safe. (laughs) We just got drunk and did everything they told you not to do and somehow came out unscathed. But It's your Wile E. Coyote thing. Yeah, or maybe everyone thought I was an undercover cop. <laughs> no, why, why, you know who's what gonna, white guy would you, sleep on the beach? You're like six foot two, three, four, or something, right? I'm six foot two, but yeah, I, yeah. when I'm nobody's gonna. Uh, but I was in the right. fetal position on the beach. <laughs> yeah. because Very I vulnerable. Had, they can still get I'll, you. I'll my blanket. They can still take a kidney. Or, so or they. Or so <laughs> you go to New York. You get bitten by the acting bug. Yeah. You start going out on commercial stuff. Yeah. Shout out Paul Brown, HMA, is who, you know, he's still a friend of mine to this day. Um, yeah, he would send me out on commercial auditions, and I would book those commercial auditions, and I loved it. 
I really, the whole idea of being, champagne is an interesting choice when you're on a podcast, isn't it? Because it's Please. quite effervescent. Yes, it really oh, is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, Fight fire with fire, having I it know. a <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, chase it. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I, I just did a lot of TV commercials. It was super, super fun. I it must have been much preferred it. Mm. It yeah, you can right? make some good money. Then. Mailbox yeah. money. Yeah. And then beyond mailbox money. At the time, like you do a commercial, you're making a hundred grand, two hundred <sighs> grand for a, a pop, oh. you know. How does species come about off of that? So off of that, same agent, same agency, commercial agent. I was like, guys, I do all these commercials. Why don't you send me out on acting things? And I started studying with a coach there just for fun, you know. Um and they just decided to send me out on the on the auditions and and species as i've said a bunch of times was my third or fourth audition basically and it was a process like that was just the first time i went in it was a huge process a several month long p- process to get the film but it was my third or fourth audition mm-hmm. yeah i got super fair fair bit of nudity in that film a little bit Did a little you- bit apprehensive thoughts or you're canadians so you're more open minded toward these things yeah you th- <sighs> funny that you say that i canadians i guess some are more open-minded my family is not of that ilk (laughs) Mm -hmm. um i don't know where i got that from but i i actually had no issue with it didn't think twice about it didn't think it was a big deal and only before the movie was coming out did i go oh by the way mom and dad um (laughs) I'm going to be topless in that, by the way, just so you know. And they're like freaked out. Mm-hmm. Aunts, uncles, family. The only one that was super cool about it was my grandmother. Nice. She was very cool. Hip Lu- grandma. Yeah. Oh, Lulu was like, if I looked like that, I'd be taking that too. And I was like, oh, thank you, because everybody hates me right now. Suddenly I'm doing hardcore porn or something in their estimations. Well, but it, I would imagine it comes from being a model. You're, yeah. you're using your body at a young age to, you know, yeah. you're you're more comfortable with it. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't doing a frontal nudity right. as a model, but you but were. the focus you is were, on your. Your, your focus is on right. your body. So I think that probably was a big part of why I felt like it wasn't. A scandalous, scandalous. I didn't even think about it yeah. that way. I really didn't. So it was, it was interesting. My brother told me recently that he, I think he was going into eighth or ninth grade or something at the time, and he just recently, as a 41, 42 year, forty two year old, just recently told me how difficult it was for him. I can buy and, that. Yeah, I really felt for him. I, I selfish 18, 19 year old, you're not, you know, you're living on your own, you're doing your thing. And then suddenly you realize, oh God, this really did affect other people, you know? It's difficult for a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, She's I She's going to leave, Brian. You, Dirty. Uh, definitely, <laughs> you were definitely the it girl there for that time, because I don't think people hadn't seen you before that, then they saw a lot of you, and they <laughs> yes. probably liked what they saw. Yeah, I mean, 19, it's not hard to look cute at 19, mm-hmm. let's face it. So, I know, if only you felt cute when you were 19. I, I mean, did. You did. <laughs> the exception. I was like, all right, not bad, all right, uh, fair, okay. <laughs> More looking back, though, you're right. You're yeah, yeah, I mean, I. how many times you do that thing where you look back it, a picture. Well, I mean, if you model, maybe maybe all bets are off, so I'll direct it toward Gina. Okay. <laughs> but, Ouch. you know, you look back and stuff when you're like 23, yeah. and then you thought you were, oh, God, look yeah. at you. It's 23. Who would want to date you? And then you look back and you go, there's nothing wrong with yeah. me. Tiny little waist, ready to take on the world. Yeah, but big hair probably, right, Gina? Obviously. So, How dare you? Jewish frizz. <laughs> you didn't, uh, you Natasha. You didn't have <laughs> yeah. uh, you didn't have bad hair. I don't think you had a bad hair era. How dare you not go through a bad hair oh. stage? Did you? Did you have a like a late eighties big hair oh. situation? Well, Species oh. was ninety five. Now so. that well, was ninety five, and or I early my, And I was in the modeling game at that time, so they taught me grow out the perm. Mm. And uh. was, it, was it that slick back? Before look? that, there was some slick back, uh, simply irresistible vibes That's going on sure. at the time for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, like my mom was a hairdresser, so she uh, experimented on you. Experimenting, I would have perms. One time, I came home from school, and my brother literally said, "Look, mom, look at the poodle," because I suddenly had these tight curls, like Shirley Temple curls, mm. and I had perfectly straight hair. It was so bizarre. 
And no, if I go back at pictures with the T's bangs and the, mm-hmm. there's all kinds of really bad looks. In well, fact, they're all pretty bad. Probably good your mom wasn't a dentist. Because <laughs> <laughs> experimenting on one's hair, right. that's temporary. Grow back. But, uh, doing work at the home in Absolutely. the dentistry realm. So <laughs> yes, you had yes. to, you did have a funky bad perm, but as soon as bad you got looks. to Paris, they were like, grow that shit out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, so now you're now are you you're moving to L.A. at nineteen twenty, and yeah. this movie this movie's a big a big deal. And Natasha, everyone's like, "Who is Natasha?" That's Hensley? funny you mention that. I, I re- forgot how big it was. I looked up a box office mojo, a July seventh release, so like prime release ninety five ninety five twenty three hundred screens. It was a big movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ben Kingsley's in that. Movie, by the way. Ben, King, ben yeah. Kingsley, yeah. Alfred Molina. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of, yeah. yeah. Marg Helgenberger. Um, gosh, I'm so impressed with myself right now remembering <laughs> these names because I'm the worst with names. <laughs> did, Mar- did Marg hate you? <laughs> no, she was so lovely. No, she was amazing. She was, no, no. I mean, not that she sh- let on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, she was so sweet. Everybody on that cast was amazing to me. It was my first film. I walked in going, doom da doom Ben Kingsley, who? What? Like, I had no idea. And they were so, um, they were very, very sweet to me. And I worked alone a lot. I mean, they were all chasing me, but I was kind of off doing my own thing most of the time, you know? Yeah, you came, I'm trying to think of what language, I mean, you spoke English, but... Not it was much. like you didn't know. It was new. I was learning kind so of. A, it, yes. Do you know yeah. the premise, Gina? I do. She's an alien. It's a, yeah. good, uh, it's a good premise. Yeah. Uh, most men in my life, uh, this is a favorite movie of theirs. Really? Yeah. It's amazing how yeah. all these years later, I think it's, what, 30 years or something or something yeah. close, 27, 29? Almost 30. 20, yeah. Almost 30 years. How many species of movies crazy. did you end up doing? I did two that I starred in and then a third that I did a cameo oh. in, I believe, is how it goes. Yeah, I think. God, that sounds about right. So now (laughs) you you relocate to Los Angeles. When I booked the movie, I lived in New York. And when I booked the film, I went, that's it, packing it up, never going back to modeling. And kind of that's what I did. I went, I'm going to be in a movie, and let's see what happens after this. And I just went, packed it up, and let's see what, you know, see what I can do with this. Did you have a very pissed off modeling agent? Um, no, because my modeling agents back in the day used to say I was with Elite and I used to live across the street from them and I was quite close to them. And they would say things to me. Model, they loved for models at that time to look pretty and shut shut up, you know, and <laughs> and not to give too much mystery away and not, mm. and you see how I am. I'm not exactly the the, the silent type. So mm. I, I, I don't think I had a lot of that mystery they were looking for. Wow. And so my agent at the time goes... You know what? I think that you're much, much suited. You got a lot of personality, kid. <laughs> Too much for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like at the time they were, it was that sort of vibe that wow. they were going for or something. Just look pretty and shut up vibe. So I know which, there's the whole sort of Me Too chapter of mm, your life, mm-hmm. which I saw a clip, I guess, of you on Megan Kelly's TV mm-hmm. show mm-hmm. when she had a. ABC, what? okay. whatever the NBC, show, NBC, NBC, yeah. NBC was whatever yeah. that yeah. show was, yeah. she was the tip of the canceling spear mm-hmm. when she said, well, it's Halloween, dress up however you want. Mm-hmm. She, you know? she said, I dressed up like Donna Summer, I believe it was. Right. They were mm-hmm. like, like that. You're, gone, you're gone, bitch. <laughs> I Boy, do it's love that. Tough, and now we've times. cured racism because <laughs> Megyn Kelly had to go home. Right. And uh, by the way, I don't know who the joke is ever on. They always have to pay him out. And well, now you're going home and getting paid 32 million bucks. That's the punchline. Mm-hmm. As Chris right. Pomo said, I want that Megyn Kelly money. And the, right. The sick irony, I don't know if any of us had the answer on the top of our heads, but wasn't she involved with the Roger Ailes thing? And like, yeah. Didn't mm-hmm. she According to Bombshell. up in some, mm-hmm. in, in a bunch of Me Too stuff right. as well? Yeah. So yeah. like if there's one person who should be, you know, Riding the wave as opposed to smash by it. I, I went. I went on her show particularly because I I liked that she had experience in that right. area. That mm-hmm. you know that she felt because I'm Makes very sense. kind of you know I'm not a righty in that way at all. So, but I really liked her and I liked you know. So that's actually why I went on that show. We had common um, ground. So she would understand. We had common ground. You know, she you understood. She from. was incredibly um, supportive. I was super afraid to talk about it. So, yeah. And I talked about it and never wanted to talk about it again. So, moving on. No, uh-huh. <laughs> Well, uh, some of it was Weinstein, right? Yeah. He's yeah. 
Now, I don't know what his status <clears throat> is. Mark what, Garagos is going to come in here. Well, he's in prison. He <sighs> came out to L.A. to right. for another trial. Right. For another trial. Mm-hmm. And then, but... I, you, you know what? You got to ask Gary. I feel like you know more than I do room. about that. I knew he was. They were bringing him out here for another trial. Did they do that yet? Because I, I, don't, I, I do because up. Attorney Mark Garagos, who has his ear to the the ground, like a, like an Indian who can tell if a train is coming. You know, <laughs> he he knows all this stuff, and they extradited him here from New York to face whatever. Uh, but. He, they got a mistrial or something, and he may be uh, paroled. By the way, I, I what? think, or out on his own, he have to out on bail right. or something like that. According to Mark, if my if my brain works, but Gary will. I think he's working on it. Gary will tell us. Um, so, how come you were never involved with the um, legal part of this whole? Rigmarole. Well, I, was, I was welcome to be a part of the legal rigmarole um, I, many, many times and by a lot of people, including women that I absolutely love and respect and adore. And I just, for me, I just didn't want to be a part of it. I felt like, I, I, f- to make a long story short, in both these cases with me, I felt really, really badly that I hadn't said something about it 20 years ago. Mm. But like so many of these women... They feel like they're the only one. It never happened to anybody else. Oh, my God. I must have done something. I put myself in a weird position. It was partly, you know, you blame yourself. It's all of the stuff that are that's so cliche that even me as a, I feel like a really strong character and a strong woman, I absolutely fell into the same thing where I'm like, it's just me. Did it to me. I put myself in a weird position. My fault, my fault, my fault. And only years later finding out that these men had done so much to other women that I went, oh, my God, I feel so guilty. And I would never actually not report a crime again. I have learned so much from that experience just in general about warning other, you know, warning other people or understanding there's crime in this area, even as a, so much as a, you know, a, a, someone breaking in your car, all of these things are super relevant for information is power. It's just being counted in this moment. Being counted, being accounted for all of that kind of stuff. But so I felt like I had done that. When I told my story, I mean, look, I had Gloria Elred all over me wanting <laughs> me to be, wanting to do the the big things and the whole, you know, all of that stuff. The, the the cases themselves, you know, all of that, the the civil case, you know, the civil cases, the for the only way that women felt like they could get any justice was this way. And so I was obviously invited to be a part of all of that. And I just actually felt like for me, I've done my job. I've told my story. I've sided with the women that I in some way felt like I allowed them to be victimized as well because by not telling. Uh, by not saying anything, by not reporting these men. Um, so I felt like I had done my job, and and that was it, and I was done after that. And, um, yeah, and I just sort of – it was a huge, incredible, incredibly scary thing to do at that time. The Megyn Kelly show you're talking the about? The Megyn Kelly show, but bigger than that, the L.A. Times story with mm. uh, with Ratner. Um, I was the first person Brett who, Ratner. Brett Ratner. A director. Son, well, Brian mm. That was around the time mm-hmm. of when he was supposed to have the Oscars, but they pulled the plug? Or was this many years later? Uh, I know he was he was supposed to produce the It was the in Oscars. 2017, okay. 18, I think, when when the story ran. Um, you know, my inc- my thing happened many years before that, but it was another one of these things where it's like, oh, my God, all these women have had these experiences. Mm-hmm. I did, never said anything. And, you know, I just felt like that I'd done my part of I'd done my part of it. You know, I'd done my part, and, and I um, – didn't want to dwell on it. And let me tell you something. In this business and this day where everybody's – and I'm not a I'm not a cancel culture person at all. I feel like make amends, apologize, stop denying, stop – you know, I'm not I'm not about that either. So I'm, I fall really in the middle in a really weird kind of way. Um, it's, a, it's a really complicated issue, but I protect – I wanted to protect the women that have had the same experience as me. That's it. And well, that's why I talked about it. You and know. and just for anyone who's ever wondered or is probably wondering now, why don't women come forward right away? Why don't you do it this way? Why don't you do it that way? I really hope Natasha's answer has has given you some perspective on that because I take that very personally as well. Ooh, it's rough yeah. because, I mean, the things that I heard, you know, 
they're like, you're a strong woman. Are you kidding me? Yeah. You're a tall mm-hmm. woman. You're a big woman. You're a this. You're sure. a that. You could have bit his, you know, dick. Can I say dick? Sure. Or dick? Say yeah. whatever you want. You could have done, you could have, you know, you, there's so many things that you can do. And the responses, I know so much more about this now. The fright, fight, flight, flight, or freeze. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've had these weird responses in different ways when I lost one of my kids, when my nanny fell down a flight. Of st- I mean, all of these different things. You don't know how you're going to respond to things, right? And, um... I responded in the way I did at the time, and and you know I re- I regret it. Mm. I forgive myself. It is what it is, but I regret it. And um, even as a strong woman, and even as someone who felt like she got through all of those years of being a child in another country, where men grabbed and this happened, and there's there's some other things that have happened over the years that I got out of. I still got stuck in some situations where I was like. I felt for my safety, and I just did, you know, what I what I did. But you do what you got to do to get out of the situation yeah, yeah. safely and alive. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and if people judge that, that's on them. Yeah. you know. Yeah. That's... Well, also, you know, I think we set the bar pretty high. Like <clears throat> we go. I mean, there's other versions of this, but let's just say you're you're juror in like a high mm-hmm. profile case, mm-hmm. and are you really going to go? Ah, that cop's innocent when you know your life will be ruined, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, when you leave Mm -hmm. the courthouse Mm -hmm. or deliver the wrong verdict and the city's going to burn to the ground, you know. Boy, no kidding. People, Mm -hmm. you know, what what, Mm -hmm. what I've really learned over the last few years, especially with COVID, you know, know, everyone talks about some people are fear-based and some people are courageous. People are geared to avoid huge uh, distractions in their life. Like mm-hmm. if you, I, I mean, it's the same huge reason. Disruptions. Mm-hmm. Disruptions. Disruptions. Mm-hmm. It's like people go, what if you lost your eyesight? You know, oh God, I killed myself. I lost my eyesight. Well, that's would be a huge disruption. And if you go, I'm going to get with glory all red and I'm going to have myself a press conference. <laughs> mm-hmm. Your life is going to change. It alters us. Yeah, it it's going to be altered that big time. Yeah. And most people want mm-hmm. to keep walking. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, you see, you see, I, I see. Speaking of walking, I see idiots walking alone with a fucking mask on because they want to be left alone mm-hmm. or whatever it is. They just want they want they want it to go by. Mm-hmm. And we're we're all kind of wired for that. Mm-hmm. There's a there's you know Sean Penn or something isn't, but mm-hmm. everyone else just kind of is just like I just want to get along. And then we go, we demand, you know, why didn't you do that press conference or Mm -hmm. why didn't you stand up for this Mm. and that? It's like, because I got a family and I got a schedule. I want to have a job again because everyone suddenly goes, Natasha Henstridge, if we look at her wrong, she's going to do, you know, and that's so not the case. Right. It's so not the case. I can joke with the boys and I can have a good time and all of that kind of stuff. That's different than being raped. Let's just call a spade a spade, you know, or harassed or, you know, and and so it became a very slippery slope in that area, too. So so part of it is that it's like I have kids. I need to work. You know, I'm not trying to, (laughs) you know, ironic that you're worried about being looked at as the troublemaker. Well, that's the predators are. Well, that's it. That's you. The victim becomes the, you know. It's too much trouble. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. No, what, it happens what, a lot. What has become of Brett Ratner? Has he just been I mean, sort of blacklisted or something? Name. I haven't heard his name, you know, attached to anything in a while. So maybe Chris he's can still, look it up. He's still. I don't doubt he's produced he's still, stuff behind yeah, the scenes, sure. but like, yeah. you know, I don't know if he's in public eye. The uh, story with Weinstein is he's in L.A. waiting trial and his New York appeal is unfolding. Mm. And that's the one uh, Mark. Mark was talking. Oh, about. he's waiting trial here. Yeah, I didn't think he was gone to trial yet because I yeah, he's a waiting from... trial. Here. Right. Yeah. 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 That's what was the uh, Weinstein element of this story, if you don't mind? Well, I do, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you can mind. It's a pain in the ass. I get it. But I... Um, long story short, I mean, I've talked about this already, but I went to Sundance, and and here's the thing that gets a little bit funny is because, you know, I was actually I think I was engaged or I was with some long term who I ended up marrying at the time. And uh, Harvey and I had known each other for years. I'd seen him at, out in New York a million different times and, you know, for years. And, you know, I'd worked for Miramax before. And um, so when he calls up out of the blue and he's like, what are you doing right now? What are you thinking about? What's going on with, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I tell him, oh, there's a book I really want to option. And he's like, let's do a meeting in L.A. I'd love to. Always had a little bit of a weird gut thing about it because – 
really? Harvey Weinstein out of the blue? He wants to do my projects now? Right. Okay. But but I'm like, all right, well, let's do it. Let's do a meeting. Great. So he's going to come out to L.A. Things change. Plans change. He ends up in Sundance. He's like, oh, I got to go to Sundance. Like he didn't know he was doing that. <laughs> now, you know, stupid me. In. Yeah. I mean, but, you know, these guys, they're in their jets and they fly around and they change their minds and whatever it is what it is. But. Um, he's like, let me send the jet for you. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I'll see you next time you're in LA. No big deal. All good. My ex at the time was like, no, you don't, you're good. You got to go. Don't mm-hmm. be crazy. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> and I'm not blaming him at all. But my gut was like, I don't want to fly up there on his plane and do this, you know, whatever. I ended up in the hotel. One thing led to another. It just turned into me getting stuck in Sundance with no rooms available. No plane. Suddenly, the, suddenly the pilot had too many hours and couldn't fly me back. You know, all of these oopsie. Yeah. Oh, oops. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, suddenly the people that are surrounding him are all not. <laughs> you know, they're all gone. And um, it, it, a combination of him trying to get in my room and him pulling it out and you know Eesh. the whole thing. Just, 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 um, and me being so uncomfortable and trying to be cool. And trying to be cool about it and trying to, like, pass it off because it's one of the most powerful men in the business, right? And we've been buddies and it's like, I'm cool, you know, that kind of thing. And just being put in a really shitty situation. Yeah, just being put in a really awkward, awkward situation. Very, very similar to many of the other stories well, yeah. you end up finding out. I was going right? to say a story that checks out as we've reported yeah. this so many times. Yeah, but at the time it's like, oh, shit, of course I flew up on his plane. Of course I shouldn't have done You know, and that's where you go. You just go to, I'm an idiot. I asked for him to behave this way, you know, and that's just not the case. Because I did nothing is, to ask for that. Right. What <laughs> yeah. good is speaking about it? Because someone's going to go, well, why did you? F-? That's it's the like, problem. Then just leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. There yeah. are people and there are women and unfortunately go, you know what would happen if you went into someone's hotel room? Really? Because for 25 years, I've taken meetings in hotels, restaurants, mm. lobbies, rooms. I've met with producers. I've met with actors. I've read scripts and scenes. Well, It's not uncommon I, at all. <laughs> I sort of lump those people in. You know, those are people like, you leave your computer on the passenger seat of the car, you deserve to have sure. it. So I was like, fuck right. you. No, I <laughs> yeah. don't. Right. It's my computer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, well, you were stupid to leave it on. Okay, right. maybe. maybe I should have put it in the trunk, yeah. but right. I don't deserve to have this mm. happen. That'll it's show my, you. It's my car. It's my computer. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Well, it's not equivalent, yeah. but I got a Brian Grazer story. <laughs> it's, some victim, it's some victim shaming there. <laughs> he for called sure. me into his know. office. I should have known better. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, it's you true. should definitely you should have flesh that. that one out. <laughs> he called me into his office, and I was like, Brian Grazer, okay. And he just wanted to talk, and then turns out later he does that to everyone. No. That he's How dare he? he just mm. wants to talk to people yeah. he mm-hmm. thinks interesting. I thought we had a project cooking. <laughs> It's hard. Look, it's, it's games for a lot of people that have a lot of power and a lot of money, and it's just a lot of you fun. Know, but the thing, <laughs> I mean, so the thing that's inherently fucked up about Hollywood is other businesses are sort of like, are you an electrician? Are you a carpenter? Are you something? Uh, Hollywood is very random in that there's a few guys and girls who you know, Tarantino or something like that. They create, they work, or Seth MacFarlane or something. Mm-hmm. They create, they work, they work, they write. Everyone else, you're just in a room with 10 other people and we could make your script or we could right. hire you to be mm-hmm. the lead in this or the mm-hmm. best friend, neighbor, whatever. It's very random. Mm-hmm. And then you got the guys like Weinstein that are deciding who makers. gets mm-hmm. the script made and who mm-hmm. gets the star in the movie or mm-hmm. whatever. And now... You have an, a shift, like a balance, mm-hmm. an imbalance. Mm-hmm. It do, doesn't work that way with other trades or professions right. or mm-hmm. other things where you have, I've managed this plant for 25 yeah. years. I have this experience. You know, yes. They could go, I'm going to go with that younger, better looking kid yep. who has no, <laughs> because so that's true. the business. So it creates a sort of randomness mm-hmm. and then they play on it. Mm-hmm. And that's where these guys come from. They come from Hollywood. It's like, this is the business. It doesn't mm. sort of work that way in the publishing industry yeah, or like right. other creative or art, fine There's art. An element of it, I think, yeah, in most Yeah, like music like, yeah, a little but, bit. But, but hey, if you're different. really yeah. you're right. good, you'll you'll succeed. It's, yeah. it's yeah. mostly behind the scenes you're right. what you're talking about, but it's well played in a documentary that you and I love, Overnight, mm-hmm. with Harvey Weinstein, who, who is the kingmaker to uh, Troy Duffy, right. who Doc Saints. right. 
Right. Oh, I have to watch that. Oh, oh you got to watch it's, that. It's a nice publicity oh. stunt, but it's, it's yeah. you know, it's the, it exemplifies the randomness of, well, we're going to take this guy and mm. make his movie. Wow. Yeah. 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 And also, if anybody, you know, I don't, you know, make a habit out of defending women's rights, but here Just goes. this once. Just you know this what? once. Try it on. This one time. Got a couple <laughs> of women here. What the hell? If, if the answer <laughs> would be, if, if in 2000 and two if harvey weinstein would ask me to go meet him in his room in aspen and i would definitely go oh, fuck yeah i'm mm, gonna be the next right. matt and ben you know <laughs> like i'm oh, sure yeah I'll, I'll do it well if the answer for me is oh shit yeah well then it's got to be the same answer for a woman right you shouldn't right you shouldn't right? be like you because it's the yeah. same gravity it's the mm-hmm. same town it's sure. the same place you want to get I've something known made him, and i've worked for him at mm. work you know for him before and my own fiance or boyfriend whatever he was at the time is like of course you're going don't be ridiculous and i'm like mm, i don't mm, i don't like that and yeah. you've got somebody going don't be ridiculous he's a big player and mm. you're an actress and you've got something you want to show him and you know so yeah no absolutely absolutely you find yourself in those things but oopsie <laughs> well then it kind of goes, see, you always kind of wonder if being, you know, strikingly attractive, male or female mm-hmm. side, mm-hmm. it's got a s- bunch of upside, fair amount of downside, like mm-hmm. two. She like, does that true? In the how aggregate. How does it <laughs> turn to out? Thank you. You know what I mean? I mean, <laughs> it opens a lot of doors, but it closes a lot of hotel room doors with creeps in it. Mm. You know what I mean? What's There's the motive? Well, What's the play here? Social media has got to be. And then you don't right. want to. So in the whole other angle, I'm saying now right. social mm-hmm. media, people, you know, talking shit or do I being right. appropriate, you know, for no yeah. reason. Right. Yeah. Like if you said, yeah. like, if you ask your average parent, like, would you love your daughter to be strikingly mm. beautiful? I'd have to be Go. like. Mm. Maybe not that yeah. much. I'd right. be like six and a half, seven. Natalia like, needs to dial it back. Yeah, you know, she's too I pretty. I have a beautiful daughter. It's like it's it's a thing, you yeah. know. And also, they it's a currency that kind of sure. learn how to navigate life. That can trade on it sure. a little bit, sure. you know. Yeah. It it's, it creates a very unnatural environment mm. where you get mm. pulled out of the ninth grade and shipped to Paris, <laughs> you know. I never thought of it that way at all until you know looking back because I never actually felt remarkably attractive at all. I really didn't. I was joking earlier when we were talking about species. It's like you look back and you think, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't this. And I did have absolutely that kind of thing too. Part of me looking back now goes, oh no, I was cute. Good for you. Go girl. You know, but <laughs> but you're right. I never looked or thought about myself that way. Even with the response and reaction, I never, you, when you have nothing to compare it to, mm. You yeah. just think everybody's really nice to everybody. Uh, <laughs> everybody's so friendly but in this town. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, no, but I think that, you know, there is a lot to be said for how that develops, how you develop as a human, too, with all of that kind of, you know, with I, that kind of stuff. And I had this hot blonde who used to live down the hill from my house, and remember one day she said, God, I got the best gardener in the world. Like, a guy came in and pruned the trees and stuff. He baked me an apple pie. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And then one time I was telling, one time I was telling her, I was like, "Oh man, I got fucked. I got to the airport. The fucking shut the door. The fucking plane. And me and Doctor Drew were just standing there. I could see the pilot. I could see him through the the window of the cockpit. I could see him, but they fucking wouldn't open the door. And she's like, "Oh, that happened to me once." And uh, the pilot like looked at me and he went like, "Yeah, okay." Wait, wait, he he went me in. Open the, door. open the door. <laughs> Pilots are super nice. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't get Not it. Not for everyone. You this don't understand. This is what you think life is. <laughs> There's a very famous Thirty Rock episode starring John Hamm as the guest star who, quote unquote, lives in the bubble of attractive people and has this. Well, everybody just lets you right into the restaurant that's crowded and right. Right. yeah, it's great. <laughs> well, that's you don't cute. you don't notice it because it's it's life as it should be. Sure. Mm. Like, I, I would tell people all the time, you know, when they'd go, oh, people recognize you. Like, what do you get? And I was like, eh, it's kind of like running into someone you went to high school mm. with mm. who's working at the club. And he's like, oh, yeah, hey. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's yeah. So go on in. Or like, uh, well, you know, or like you go, like 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 uh, when we travel sometimes. Mm. And we'll call some steakhouse. Mm-hmm. And they go, we close at 10. And they go, well, Adam's coming in yeah. with a few people, but the show ends at 10. Do you think we could go? Oh, yeah. Well, we'll do. 
it it feels like life should work that Just way. Right. Like anyone should be able to call the steakhouse right. and she'll be on and have them keep <laughs> it open. open. <laughs> but it's like it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. it should be yeah. the baseline. Oh, my my right. wife's family has a place on Double Island, which is beautiful, Newport Beach, and yeah. it's like oh, it's so clean and there's no homeless and everyone's so friendly and this. Yeah, that's just how it should be. Right. You're clean and people say hi to you. Right. What a utopia. No, that should <laughs> yeah. be the baseline. You know what the, the message today is? Mm. Mm. Hashtag grateful. We're all yeah. very lucky. Well, That's sure. Right. Well, well, well. I like We're it. very lucky. <laughs> yeah, I think that... It's 2 22 and I just heard that's a thing. It's a thing. I didn't know it was a thing. We should, 22 22 We should have acknowledged it oh, uh, 28 minutes ago. Yeah. yeah they're what, calling it's it Tuesday. You got to bury the bad stuff and you got to... Oh, Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to... Bury bad things, yeah. and burn bar- bad things, and bury things that you want to bring into yeah. your world. Oh, is that what we do? We gotta do it. I mean, we gotta do it. We gotta do it. You got ri- you got to get rid of the bad stuff. Get rid of the bad. Write it down. Get rid of it. Burn it, and then, I mean, yeah, usher in the new. Usher well, so in the we new. Un- write down. My, the- but if we unpack the bad stuff, I feel like I'm gonna start dwelling on no, the bad stuff. No, just write it. Burn no, it. You, burn it fast. you give it a Viking funeral. Oh, yes. you burn it. Yeah, it's homework. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. I did that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I burnt their homework in my unfinished pool. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a picture of that somewhere, Chris. All right. Burnt, what? I, I don't know why, but I lit my kid's homework on fire. In protest to, like, stop making yeah. parents do all that homework kind of thing? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, funeral pyre. They don't, uh-huh. they don't get it now in high school, but in, in junior high, it'd be like, it'd be like, They'd come home and it'd be like, we got to build a paper mache, one thirty second scale of the space shuttle. I and then you'd be like, Ugh. yep. And then they're like, is the place open? Is the, it's, it's the Joanne like, Fabrics. Yeah. 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 Yes. You have the gall to wonder why your kid doesn't want to go to virtual they school. It's it. brutal, man. No, we had to do so much homework, right? You when did, I, right? I had a 20 and a 23-year-old. I did so much homework. Oh. Homework that I never did when I went to school because I left. Right. <laughs> well, my thing is like, my thing. Payback. <laughs> Everything is just sort of preparation for work, but all the work I've done, either it was carpentry, it was a boxing coach for a while, or or even in radio. Like, you go, you do your job, then you go the fuck home, and then that's your time when you get home, because... If we can't get it done here for eight hours, people, then yeah. we're not doing it yeah. right. You Teachers, got, that's your domain. You know what? You take over. That's your You got an 11 your year old. <laughs> you got eight hours of an 11 year old's time. That's yeah. a big chunk of their yeah. life. Now, if you can knock it out of the park. And Teachers then they, hate our guts right now. They can go. Oh, they already. <laughs> oh, whatever. I'm learning Common Core and Singapore math for my stepson. Oh, I didn't really? know there was a thing called Singapore math. That Singapore like a, math. That's yeah. a different. Oh, it I, dots and binding groups. Oh, and, oh it's the worst. Oh. It's like gay mm. slang to me. I think I use that when I play Yahtzee, but anyway. That's very uh, possible. <laughs> oh, there's a picture of my unfinished pool and uh, my kid's uh, homework, which I burnt. Burning at the bottom. It's not on, not on the bottom there, of it. but. The other thing, too, is. That's half- a lot of bench around your pool. Oh, that's they just. Fancy. He likes no, to lounge. that's just scaffolding for the guys. Uh, to oh, I was going to say, wow, a lot of benching around there. There's a lot of places to sit. Call it the grotto. Yeah. <laughs> I did, <laughs> though. I will tell, I will say this to those, uh, to the. 40, between the 40 and 60% of our audience that's thinking about putting an in-ground pool <laughs> in their home Go on. in the next few months. Uh, I did the Baja shelf. Yeah. Nice. That's nice. No, I did nice. the plaster on the pool a okay. different color than I did the Baja shelf. So as not to destroy oh, yourself. You see, yeah, you can see where the edge is. Everyone mm-hmm. does the Baja mm-hmm. shelf the same as the pool. Make it something different. Yeah. It's its own space. Super smart. And enjoy that Baja oh, shelf. I like it. I, like I uh, <laughs> is this does this go in the coffee table book? What black people think white people talk about? Yes, this okay. is this is in that book. <laughs> I also did a pool once in such a crazy shade of green that the guy mixed it up, and I was like, um, "Yep, that's the green I want." Old twenties Spanish house. Mm. It worked worked well, and uh, he went okay. And then later he came back because it was such a crazy shade of green, and he smeared it on a piece of paper. <laughs> And I said, uh, what's this for? And he said, sign it. Because <laughs> he was he goes, like. Because when this looks like shit, <laughs> no one I don't right coming mind. back going, I never fucking okay. This is a fucking disaster. Turned out great. Yeah. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah. You have a I vision, you have a vision that not everybody has, Adam. And that's, that's, that's right. That's the moral of that story, right? Sometimes you have to. I got an Aston Martin yeah. green with a red interior that they said you can't. Uh, <laughs> couldn't be done. Christmas be done. Aston Martin. I love that's it. right. Mm. All right. Let me tell you about uh, CBDX. When CBD came out, we all uh, wanted. Uh, well, we thought it was like cannabis, and it wasn't, but helped you. But uh, how about, uh, well, 
You didn't exactly feel it. CBDX.com, Delta 8 THC, a federally legal form of THC. It's also absolutely uh, changed the way you feel. Like, you know, you take the CBD, it's fine, but it's like, is it working? I can't feel it. Uh, flower that's just like the cannabis, you know, strong but discreet vape cartridges, absurdly potent gummies, and even pure concentrate. These will get you stoned, people. So you should know going up, they have uh, THC in them. And uh, you're not pass a drug test if that's the, that's the plan, not a THC one. So never drive or operate heavy machinery when using these products. And you can go to CBDX.com. That's uh, four letters, CBDX. Use the code ADAM for 20% off and a free gift. All right, let's take a quick break. We'll come back and do a little news with Natasha and Gina right after this. I should give a plug for Natasha, by the way. Oh, the yes. movie's called This Game's Called Murder, and it's available on Apple TV, Amazon, Google Play, YouTube, DirecTV as well, Instagram, at Natasha Henstridge. And uh, congratulations, nominated for uh, Canadian Screen Actor Award for Dig Sound. Uh, and uh, that's work in season three just finished up. And uh, also producing a movie called All I Want for Christmas as uh, well. So Is busy, this going to be a Hallmark good. movie? I don't think Hallmark oh. is going to go for it because I think it's a little, little racy? it's a little racier oh. than a Hallmark oh. movie. It's, Lifetime it, movie? Deal. It might be more in that <laughs> more in that world, but streaming, you know, we could stream nice. it anyway. Nice. Yeah, it's a little edgier. Perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's do a couple of like coaches put your hands back in your pockets because this has been quite a couple of days of news when it comes to uh, hitting people on the court, on the ice. Michigan basketball head coach Juwan Howard made big news over the weekend by taking a swing at and connecting with the face of Wisconsin assistant coach Joe uh, Krabenhoft in the handshake line after the Michigan-Wisconsin game. I'm going to wow. show it to you in a second. The punishments were announced Monday. Howard was fined forty grand and is suspended for the rest of the season. That's five more games. And coach Krabenhoft, he was not punished. He's the one that got hit in the head. Uh, here's a clip of what happened, and it's being... Uh, Called by the guys in the booth. To get in the line. Interesting finish here. 77. Oh, see, and they're going at it. Oh, yeah. Howard and Guard are not happy right now. As the two of them continue to have words. And we told you Juwan wait for Howard it. Was not happy about that timeout. There it is. Oh, oh overhand. Yeah. Scrum breaks out. So there was a press conference afterwards. I'm not happy about the timeout, which means Wisconsin had a lead or something. Yeah, so he, holding a large lead in the final minute, Wisconsin took a timeout with 48 seconds left and put uh, bench players on the court, then called another timeout with 15 seconds left. And Howard's going to explain why that affected him and what exactly was said. Mm. Raising it to a point where it looked like you hit another coach in the face. What kind of happens in between to make that happen? Well, basically... Uh, you know, I addressed with uh, the head coach that uh, I will remember that <laughs> because of that timeout. And uh, of course, I want to touch me. And I think that was um, very uncalled for him to touch me as we were verbalizing to communicate with one another. So uh, that's what ended up happening. That's what escalated. So he, somebody touched him and he felt threatened and popped that guy in the face. Yeah, he's nine inches taller <laughs> and he has 40 pounds of muscle. And, 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 and four 19-year-olds between them. Yeah. Yeah, but... He being an excuse, like, he put his hands on me. Yeah, yeah. He, or... He, he sort of held you up to talk to you. Right. I mean, he, wasn't, he didn't push you. Uh, yeah. I don't know what school we're at. I, In terms of where everyone's at with being blown out. Like, having... You Do know, explain, please. Well, it's like sometimes in football, you're up by 19 points with 30 seconds left, and you're down on the five-yard mm -hmm. line, and you can either take a knee, right. or you can score mm -hmm. again. And there's there's a school of thought. You obviously know this. You've heard the old school of guys. Hey, you play to the whistle. You yeah. play to the end of the game. No slaughter like, rule. Well, I, no, the opposite of that. It's yeah, like, yeah. hey, if you're at the five-yard line, you play, you play football. Right. I think once we've established that everyone has signed off on playing a football game, basketball game, baseball, or whatever it is, then you can do whatever you, whatever you want. And you put it in the scrubs. That's what you do with 45 seconds left. You put yeah. in the, the, the walk-ons. Yeah, the only, I mean, it's kind of, and also, we always kind of talk about, like, um, oh, the psychological effects, the lingering of a, of a young person getting blown out mm -hmm. of, you know, 
I I always sort of had fond memories because they make great stories mm. of of just being destroyed in one <laughs> oh, game, yeah. yes. one game or the other, uh, yeah. which has happened a few times, and well, also lots of like lessons learned sure. in those in Grit. those situations too. Yeah. Well, there was uh, another one. Uh, cops tell TMZ Sports that they're investigating a junior hockey player who punched a ref during a game in Massachusetts on Sunday. A spokesperson for the Foxborough Police Department confirmed that a member of the South Shore Kings had unloaded a right hand into the face of the ref in the middle of the game. And I have it for you. As TMZ previously reported, the United States Premier Hockey League hit the player with a lifetime ban from its league over the punch. A zero tolerance policy for striking an official and this is what happened. Definitely not a Jew. <laughs> Here it comes. There's... Ooh, he oh, he high him. That's a big... Ooh, big it's a high st- stick, yeah. yeah. But look, ref pops right back up. Yeah, but... Like, a what the hell, man? I was going to say, that's just hockey, and the guy must have been Canadian, but that was pretty... <laughs> hard. That was hardcore. Yeah, that, that guy couldn't defend rough. himself. Yeah. No, yeah. that was pretty rough. But, you know, in terms of punching people... <laughs> Hockey shouldn't have a zero tolerance. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, That's more for ice dancing <laughs> and ballet. That should be hockey should have some tolerance. But with such officials, a part of, no, officials all right. is a problem. Well, then yeah. go. Yeah. All right, we hey, have. He laced up the cl- uh, the uh, the skates just like everyone else. <laughs> we have a, he knew we he have was getting a lot into. of tolerance for punching people <laughs> yeah. and a very small amount for punching officials. There, yeah. good. But yeah. Uh, zero, I don't know. Yeah. Well, since we're on the subject, do you want to see one more? Because there's just been a string of these. Finally. Don't you guys feel like there's something in the wind, whether it's a Southwest flight or junior hockey, (laughs) where people are putting their hands on people very willingly, it seems like, in a, ironically, in a world of social distancing and washing everything with Purell. People are putting their hands on strangers in a lot of different places. Yes, Women are duking it out. I've said Mm -hmm. it a million times. I've never seen more women Mm -hmm. fight than Mm -hmm. I'm seeing now. COVID has made people lonely. You know, they miss touch. They miss (laughs) touch. It's it's missing touch. Oh, so it's like they're crying for attention. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, I think so. For a hug (laughs) in the face. Cutting yourself to feel. (laughs) With a fist. Right. (laughs) I never, like, I never would be presumptuous Presumptuous enough to feel like I could put my hands on someone no. like on a commercial no. flight, but people are oh, getting I'm into kidding. it. They now. are. Well, even in youth That's sports, crazy. I'll show you this just to round out this uh, crazy sports segment. A coach for a basketball team of ten-year-olds in California has been removed from the league and could face criminal charges after he <laughs> choked the ref. And I have that for you as well. The oh coach, who was immediately suspended, was unhappy about a call that the ref made and he yelled at him. But things escalated quickly when he wrapped his hands around the ref's neck until another official had to intervene. Here's what that looked like. Like a young, he is choking the life out of this kid. Everyone trying to pull him apart. Everyone's wearing a mask. <laughs> or at least everyone around him is. Well, they're not breathing. They're holding yeah, breath. It's true. It's funny. I always, I always, I'm always interested in the act of choking, because that makes you like that's the most visceral thing yeah, you can do. Yeah, you're the bitter Like you literally, if that's your impulse, right? You know, like it's, it's like it, so. It's like someone steps on your foot and you push them or mm. something. That's just a reaction, reflex, reflex, reflex yeah. or mm. choking is very primal. Yes, you know, it's like I will kill yes. you. I must stop you from living. Yeah, it's definitely not a defense move. I would think it's also very like crime of passion you know <laughs> like guys who do that to yes. women it's like mm-hmm. it's it's a passionate thing it's a weird thing to do to a stranger in mm-hmm. front of other people it, but it suggests you have a wiring mishap control thing. yeah to a co- probably a college a kid? kid that was a for 10 year old basketball yeah. game? wow mm. Suddenly the song Teach Your Children Well came into my head. I don't know when we were watching that. Oh the great so, wow. uh, it happened Jeez, uh, Brian will so remember the great Woody Hayes yeah, uh, in, his, in his, the last game he ever coached, a uh, bowl game, he punched an opposing player on the sideline. I oh, think that's he, how you go out. Gosh. I think he choked. I think he tried to choke him. Oh, did he actually try and choke him? I, I remember the swing, but maybe he went for the throat. You have to look. as It was you know, up high sideline footage. Mm. Yeah, we'll see if we can find the great Woody Hayes. Well, but, uh, legend, yeah. but he, had lo- he, he was on his way, you know, mentally on decline. Yeah. You don't say. At that point. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, it's scary. Right. People got to 
Got to do less of that. Well, let's let's pivot to some other sports news. The U.S. Soccer Federation and the women's team have announced a deal that will split $24 million among the players in back pay after years of unequal compensation for the men's and women's teams. And players have also secured a promise that their future bonuses will match the men's. The Daily Beast reports that when the deal is finalized, it'll bring on an end of the gender discrimination lawsuit the players filed back in 2019, which we talked about in 2019. Uh, and speaking to the New York Times... Striker Alex Morgan celebrated uh, the settlement. She said it's a monumental win for us and for women. And of course, Megan Rapino, who we've all heard of for our generation, knowing that we're going to leave the game in an exponentially better place than we found it is everything. I hate fucking Megan Rapino <laughs> so fucking much. Just everything is about lesbians and this and everything's a fucking all she does is fucking wine. Yuck. I hate those fucking ingrates. As a, how do you really feel? <laughs> God, do I hate Megan Rapino. But now women got paid as much as guys. That wasn't the thing. The bonuses. It, it was something else. Yeah, and, and the also, travel, the accommodation. Su- they found more... a sneakier way to still yes. underpay the women. Right. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> but like with yeah, the women's, yeah. I know. Let me if... check how much dude models get paid. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Zilch. But, you know, it's like, we're not a lot of soccer fans around here, at least yeah. less than the rest of the world. But like when someone's kicking ass, we do hear about it. Like we do know who they are because they kicked so much ass. Yeah. So by all means, you know. Yeah, they did. Get the spoils. But the thing was, they're not getting paid like the men, but they were getting paid evenly, but they were doing better, and maybe it is the bonus thing. Woody Hayes punched and choked, I guess. You're both right. 1978 Gator Bowl. (laughs) To be fair to Woody, the guy ended the game with the interception, Mm -hmm. ended up on the sideline of Ohio State. It was kind of talking a little shit (laughs) or sort of enjoying the victory. I feel like that happens every single It day. happens, but I, <laughs> my feeling is that ah, jog it back. Go celebrate on your side of the sideline, but oh, we Let's can watch see. Woody. Ladies, Woody coaches for the white team. Thank the you. White team. Thank you. That's right. Because I don't even know what football is. <laughs> Arch Schleister. That's a man. Wow. No, he oh. didn't talk, I'm sorry. He didn't give him any time to talk shit. They were popped up. Oh, he didn't do anything. Oh, he gave him the look. He, he didn't dance. Look. He didn't, look. It was a look. He's doing he, it. He, he gave him the stare down. Let's see. Yeah, but. Oh, my God. I think that's less than one second from his feet to punch. Yeah. It's through. either it's a move you make or you don't. But there's usually like a choreographed wow. dance, a finger. I, if there, there's, a, there's a taunt. He's there. a white guy. Yeah. Come on, give him a break. There's a little. <laughs> Oh my! Passionate. Look, Woody wouldn't have done it for no reason, <laughs> <laughs> and he did. He, he, gave, he gave him the he gave him the punch and the choke. That's he gave, the, gave him the big right hand to the right neck under God. the thing, and then comes Goes in with, with the, bu- ah. That's vicious. Uh, it, That's yeah. Vicious. Wow. You're right. There is something about the choking thing. It's you could be. Uh, yeah. yeah. But let me tell you, football coaches. <laughs> The stuff they would do to the guys on their own team was always the worst. I mean, they would, they would, they put you just this. How move. many times you were grabbed by the face mask? <laughs> yeah, by the coach. That <laughs> Chris, there's a picture of me playing pop Warner football for the Falcons. It might be in the book or something somewhere. I'm standing on the sideline talking to Coach Byrne. He has my. <laughs> Oh, he's got you? He's not pulling me into the ground or anything. He just had his oh, hand. Attention. It was like, I want to tell you something, and I don't want you to forget it. <laughs> I don't want you to move your face while like, I'm talking. It was like, oh, he's hanging on to my chin strap, I think it is. But you can tell he's got his hand on his hip. Oh, he's serious. He's looking down at me, and he's pissed. And that was like during a timeout, and I think I was the captain of the defense, and he was signaling in, like, we need a 6-1 defense, and I wanted to do a 5-2, so I was, like, shaking it off or something, and I don't wow. think he liked me. And he's me. like, fingers on the solar plexus, yeah. listen to me. Shaking it off, so he <laughs> wanted to get a nice uh, talking to with me about uh, uh, my attitude, and, uh, yeah, I had his hand on my chin strap. But, yeah, oh, they, grab your, strap. they grab your face mask. The other move, they're famous. The move they would do all the time is no big deal is you'd be down in your stance, and then they'd walk past you, and they'd see you putting a little too much pressure on your front hand, mm-hmm. you know, leaning too mm-hmm. far forward. Oh, just, kick just kick Kerplunk. it. Just kick it. 
<laughs> it was just kicking. That just sounds like I fun. never I mean, thought about great. breaking a, a kid's wrist or, <laughs> no. or, or face, or pinky oh, finger, or nose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd have your you'd equipment on that, yeah, usually, yeah. but you'd be <laughs> leaning down in that three point stance and take a look and just kick your the hand, go flying out, land on your face. <laughs> uh, then you'd get up and go, Sorry. No. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's do it again. Not what the fuck, old man. My fucking dad's a lawyer, dude. He's going to sue your ass. No, they just they just torture you. Wow. They just beat the shit out of you. That's in a very was. stylish Polly Rayon shiny shirt. Yeah, that, and stovepipe pants. That was seventies. That was at uh, Polly High. Wow. Look around for houses in that neighborhood. Gina. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you how the neighborhood's af- doing. There's some affordable where, where are you in looking? stock. I we've been looking everywhere from everywhere. literally Encino, Burbank Valley. Oh, I mean, just God. yeah, Van Nuys, North Hollywood. Mm. All right, let's bring it home, Gina. We really should go to Tarzana. I'm Gina yeah, Grad, and that's the news. Gina, Gina. <laughs> that was the news with Gina Grad. All right. Let's see. You can go. I'm going to be in Waukegan, Illinois at the Genesee Theater March 10th doing stand up there and then uh, coming out to Kansas City. I think Gina's yeah. going to make that trip. We'll do uh, four shows there at the Comedy Club in Kansas City. You can go to amcrawl.com for live shows everywhere. And if you want to pre order my book, I think you can do that on uh, Amazon. It's called Everything Reminds Me of Something. <laughs> Natasha Henstridge. Well,. Shoot her on Instagram at Natasha Henstridge. And what else should I plug, Natasha? Oh, I'm actually, I actually, um, I'm going to do uh, a show called Charmed on the CW. I'm going to do a few episodes of that coming up this fourth season of Charmed, awesome. by the way. Charmed is Charmed. in Charmed, the one we know? Yeah, the one you know, the one you know, yep. That one went away and came know. back? I is was an old happened? school Charmed, and now there's right. a new reboot, reboot of Charmed. Aha. Yeah. This is your yeah. dad's Charmed. Yeah. <laughs> and also... <laughs> Yeah, or on that subject, Digstown was the name of a movie mm. about a boxer mm-hmm. with Louis Gossett Jr. Yeah, and James. Oh, the, yeah, James Woods. Wasn't oh. that Digstown? That sounds familiar. I think so. I think so. I think I'm not confusing with the Great White Hype, am I? No, but that was around that was the same time. Okay. All right, we digress. <laughs> so until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Natasha Henstridge and Gina Grad and Paul Bryan. Say it, Mahala. Top pastrami, coleslaw. Swiss cheese, Russian dressing mm. on double baked oh. rye bread. I'm not exaggerating. This is a famous sandwich. It's the I, number 19. I knew what it was instantly. You did. It, it's like you're, you salivate just looking at this picture. Yeah, it's the amazing. best. It's yeah. porn. You got to get your. Did you mention the bread? Did you mention yeah, the bread? Yeah, d- twice, oh, twice okay. baked rye. Yeah, double baked rye bread. Yeah. Oh.